<laughs> the longer this channel is in existence, the more myself and the guests screw up with the. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm muting the non mute. Oh, no, no, don't apologize. Yeah. I, I probably do it more than anybody else, so that's that's fine, you know. Um, how's it going, Carl? So happy to have you here, man. Thank you for having me. This is gonna be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome, yeah, me too. Me too. I, 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 I know we'll have some fun. Um, so thank you again for agreeing to do this. It's it's really awesome of you. Um, yeah, and I really appreciate it. Um, My pleasure. Everybody, yeah, I, I thank you all for uh tuning in. I'm actually I gotta say, and I don't mean this as a slight to Carl, but I'm actually surprised at the fact that there's almost a couple of dozen of you already here so early, because it usually takes a while for the trickle in to come. And also because I expected that a bunch of you, like you, Rickster, right here, here you are, good evening to you. Um, and perhaps Marcus, I don't know, is Marcus here yet? Yeah, yeah, here he is, look at that, there's Marcus. Anyone get any grummet? I did not, there was no grummet. There was a total of like six pages, and they were like oh, yeah, uh, pages, you know. So yeah, it was pretty uh pretty bad show for me. I saw three things that tempted me, and I decided not to buy them though. So, um, how about you, Carl? I I, I sold a piece, and oh, yeah. I I bought yeah. a piece from the Nikki Barucci. So. <laughs> wow. yeah. What a small what a small world. Good little family we got here, right? Yeah, yeah. I like. That. That's awesome. Um, yeah, what I was saying, everyone, was I'm surprised that there's a, like almost a couple dozen here because uh, usually you guys are listening to the um, post uh, comic art live. What are they called? The, the, re the recap. recap, yeah. The right, yeah. The, re the re recap thing. So that's 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 what usually happens. But anyways, thank you, thank you for for being here right off the the top of the uh, hour. Really, really appreciate it. Um, let me check who else is is here. Oh, look at that! Our buddy. There he is. <laughs> oh, apparently, <laughs> according to him, apparently he's only here for you, buddy. Oh man, thanks, I, Matt. I'm offended, Matt. I'm offended. <laughs> but uh, that's all right. That's all right. Happy Sunday to you, my lovely wife. Thank you as always. Appreciate you. Number one Marvel fan, always. Hey now. Hey now. And my buddy Jason Ladwig, what is up, sir? What is up after that shellacking you took from Ohio State today? Uh, how you feeling? Hopefully not too bad. Uh, Mr. Red Jack, good evening to you. Speaking of the three pieces that I saw that I was tempted to buy yesterday, two out of the three were pieces from Mr. Red Jack's gallery. <laughs> And they were so dirt cheap, Mr. Red Jack, Brian, as my friend, um, I would, I know this was the first time you've ever sold. And I just wanted to say, because I didn't have time to, 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 to email you when this happened. Um, I just want to say, if you ever, next time you decide to sell stuff, if you ever feel like, you know, you might want to run a few things by somebody with some sort of selling experience, Welcome to reach out to me. You gave away some stuff this weekend, uh, Brian, and I felt terrible. I was, I was like feeling guilty. Part of the reason I didn't buy the pieces from you, Brian, um, is because I felt guilty. I was like, oh my God, if I buy them, I feel guilty not telling him that they're way too cheap. Um, and that's really, really the main reasons I didn't buy them. And they ended up selling to other people. I don't know who, but mm, whatever. But I wanted you to know that um, you ever want to run it by uh, someone, I'm, I'm glad to, to give you uh, my opinion as to what some of the stuff might be worth. But anyway, Name high and come down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, bonsoir, mon ami. Comment ça va, dis non? Uh, Ian saying hello, hello, hello. Lee, couldn't miss this one. I'll be in and out watching the cow wrap up also. Okay, there you go. See, we get some guys doing the double duty, you know. Wow, wow, uh, Alberto. Wow, greetings. Greetings. I figured you, you're probably doing double duty too, though. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Uh, CJ, what is up? Good to see you as always. And uh, I'm Vivian. What is up, Karen? Good to see you. And hello to everybody, of course, as always. Hello to Carl and Vivian and who else? Good evening, everyone in the chat. Everyone, yes. There hello. You. 
Um, one of our only two females we usually have here. So it's always a thrill to have uh, her here. And the, other, the, the, the only other one of the two is my wife, who is not a collector in any way, shape, or form, and is only here to support me. So <laughs> I, I really uh, appreciate the, the female quotient here, you know. Um, so thank you, ladies. I appreciate that. Uh, of course, Jason, Southern Comic Geek. Hello, sir. I hope you uh, had a fine weekend. John Brown, good evening to you. Um, the Tolf Madness. What's the Tolf Madness? Number one, Marvel. Huh? The uh, the cases are they're, they're from IKEA. They're called the uh, D D Tolf cases. Oh. So it's the, it's the model of the case, oh, which the is they are. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> okay, look at that. He must have them. Yeah, well, I mean they're they're like they're they're like one of the best collector kind of cases that are out there. They used to be really affordable. Now they've kind of shut up. But uh, oh, really? Luckily, I got those years ago. Yeah. And it, so, if, if am I looking at it correctly? Like, is it is it one big unit or is it like you buy one square? They're all done. It's in it's, it's each each square is one case. So there's oh. each each case has four shelves, uh, just one shelf wide. So there's what there's eight here, eight of them. Oh. So, so does that mean, are they, are, is each cube, let's call it a cube, is each cube stacked on top of the next one? Uh, there's a glass shelf. There, there, I mean, there's, there's, this is all one unit. Oh. So, yeah, there's just four shelves in the, in the case. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, that's really neat, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, is it all action, uh, action figures? It's statues? It, um, it's it's it used to be all action figures. I've pared down, and now it's like kind of like a mix of stuff. I have like the old um, Death of Superman, like N the Super Nintendo cartridges in there, just kind of like switch up the display yeah. a little bit. So it, it's it's varied now. But yeah. yeah, yeah, switching it up is good. You know, it's like it's yeah. like some collectors in the art uh, sphere will get these. Um, well, you know, a lot of them actually get the IKEA style. I guess you could buy them in many places, but you know, we call them IKEA style, a one size fits all sort of thing. So it's not the greatest thing, uh, frames, but because they're simple, you just open it from the back really quickly, and then you can oh, every now and then you rotate the art swap you want to show, yeah. you know, and you swap yeah. it in and out, whatever, you know. So that's cool. It, it, it's it's neat because it does give you that variety, and you don't get you know you get to see everything and enjoy everything you know at some yeah, point. It's not it's not so it's just a little more visually appealing instead of being jam packed with with, yeah. with stuff. So yeah, 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 exactly. Um, who do we have here? We have Drunk Superman. Do you know <laughs> Drunk Superman? Because I don't know who I, that is. I don't. So is he wow, straight out of what Superman three? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Drunk Superman, since it's your first time here, uh, you might want to let us know if you know either of us personally or if we know you and this is just some crazy name uh, you go by online. But uh, happy to see you. That's very cool. And uh, Matt, look at all those toys. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, evening, evening to you, of course, CJ. And uh, yeah, it's cool. uh, we're all hopped up on comic art. Yeah, um, I can have yeah. Good weekend for that. Oh, there you go. Welcome, Carl, from my wife. There you go. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, Grand Admiral Burtis, a new, another new one. I thought this was the Cal wrap up. That's a yeah. That's a that's a buddy of mine, Daniel Daniel Burtis. He's a big uh, Lex Luthor guy. Oh, like, uh, that's that's the yeah. That I mean, he, he, Daniel Burtis. Yeah. Yep. 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 And I love the fact that you came in and made that joke about thinking it's the, the, the Cal wrap up. Yeah, I like that. You got some calls for your first post ever on my channel. So that's good. I like that. <laughs> um, what else we got? Hey, what's up? The Oklahoma kid is in the house. Howdy, howdy, howdy to you, Dwayne Zapanian. What is up? A lot of us are multi multitasking. I guess so. I figured. Okay. I appreciate that. Because like I said, I think, I think last year it was like really quiet for the first – I don't know, 30, 40 minutes or something, and suddenly everybody finally started coming in or whatever. So uh, one show on my phone and one on my computer. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. What can I tell you? Uh, yo, what's up, C uh, JC? JC Padilla. Good to see you as always, my friend. Uh, I want that Aparo tea cover from Nick, but my wallet's not that fat. Uh, the tech cover, I guess, is what you're trying to say. Yeah, the, um, the detective one piece. Yeah. Yeah, my wall's not that fat either, uh, Lee, so we're in the same boat. A lot, most of us can probably say the same thing about that cover. So, 
Uh, Rickster, I tried sharing screens last year, but I'm better at single tasking. Wow. That means you chose me this year? Wow. I thank you so much for that. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of myself and Carl, thank you. Thank you. Very sweet of you. Yes, yes, detective. I know what you meant. There. Thank you. Uh, yeah, baby. No harm, no problem. You got it, baby. You know it. We're rolling. Next week, we're going to roll again to Maryland. We're going to take them to the woodshed. And one week after that, two weeks from today, we will be taking Ohio State to the woodshed for the third year in a row. Thank you. I appreciate uh, you noticing that, uh, Marcus. Thank you. Uh, there's another guy with both shows on. What you lacking? I'm, I'm a lot. I was talking about the Spartans, man. You know that. The Lions, what a game, baby. What a game. The Lions, what a game against the San Diego. Uh, well, sorry, Los Angeles Chargers. It's so weird to have to say San, uh, Los Angeles Chargers, but what a game against the Chargers. So, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome is all I can say. Um, that's right there, Jason. That right there is what Super Bowl teams are made of, right? That's the Super Bowl. That's those are the kind of games Super Bowl teams win. So there we go, Marcus. Yeah, you know what I you know what I was talking about. Red Jack uh, pricing on the three hundred. A few things I was like, oh my lord, oh wow. Um, he sold a lot of stuff, but yeah, when you mistakenly underprice stuff, that's what's going to happen. Is you're going to sell a lot. But anyways, I mean, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want you to feel bad, Brian. I just, I wanted to protect you. So, uh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm being serious. If you ever want to talk about before you price stuff, uh, I'd be happy to give you my opinion anyways. you know, It's, a, it's always tough. I mean, it's tough to, you know, I mean, sometimes yeah. you don't want to, you know, sometimes we don't value ourselves high enough, obviously. I mean, you know, it, it happens. So, yeah, reach out, you know, to anybody. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. And especially for someone like like uh, Brian, who, he like he said, it was his first time. He's not he's not typically a selling, the selling type, yeah. you know, you never yeah. see him sell stuff. So if you don't normally sell stuff, like you might want to be looking it's over. <laughs> not to sell it, but it's, it's okay to not as be as polite or friendly with your pricing to starting out. I mean, you know, have have a price in mind. Yeah. Kind of put, put throw a number out there. And then I I mean, anybody looking at my stuff, I, I kind of always bake in some, some wiggle room. So yeah, yeah. Have no, to for negotiate, sure. you know. Absolutely. Daniel's saying that you sent them a link to this. Yeah. He thought it was a link to a Lex Luthor page. <laughs> yeah, well, it's either that or some art of showing him or, yeah, so, yeah. Um, Rickster, if you were referring to the, that wasn't that the one with the uh, the uh, America versus the JSA? I think that's that that's the one you're, you're talking about. That's one I was, that's one of the two that I was talking, that I was talking about. So, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever, sale to sale, but. Here's the thing is I felt even worse because I read carefully. I, I looked at it carefully and I read that he mentioned the only reason he was doing it because he was trying to help. I think he said it was his brother uh, with some finances. So, you know, you're doing it to get rid of your collection, to uh, you know, to, to help a family member. All the more reason to get that help if you need it because it still would have sold. I'm telling you, if you priced it the way I would have told them to price it, it would have still have sold and he would have gotten more money for his brother. So that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at, you know? So, um, yeah, he's got a few, he's got a few. Okay. Oh my God. They're the way to go. So does Lee. See, I, I told you, it's like one of like the, you know, a, a, the, the hot item to have as a collector, they, they weren't great. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian, I know it was an emergency, exactly, and you made a profit. I, I get it. I, I, I'm just telling you, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to like put you down. I, I, I'm just letting you know. If you ever want a little advice, I, I, I'm happy to give you my opinion. Um, and I simply, you just look. There's a lot of people whose opinion you can ask for prices. I'm just telling you. I'm happy to give you if you value mine. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I just want to protect you so you can make more money. That's all. Um, uh, what's up? Good day, mate. Just tuning in now. Good day, good day, good day to you. Thank you as always for being here, David. Good morning to you, I guess. Uh, Kenneth Bird, good to see you as always, sir. From Virginia, there you go. I had to let us know. Oh, look at that. Gil Ellis back. You've returned. Hello, everyone. Wow. 
So now he's saying that those cases are old school. I think they were discovered yeah. in the Bowen era. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I, I probably, I bought them. I actually bought a set before I moved. I sold that set and then bought a oh. new set when I, oh. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to. You don't have to move them. them. Yeah, I sold them to a buddy of mine and then bought a new set. But yeah, probably like 10, 10 or so years ago. I'm sure they've been, they've been around for a long time. Okay. So. Wow. Hey, Nikki. What's up, man? Yeah, please, everybody. If you don't mind, please hit that little thumbs up uh, 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 icon right below the, the screen. I'd really appreciate it. Um, it just helps the YouTube algorithm maybe put the video in front of a few other people. That's all it does. I'm not getting money for it. Don't worry. Uh, thanks, Nick. I appreciate you rallying the likes as always. Yeah, man, we got 32 people here. So if we're only stuck at 19, there's like 13, 13 of you who could do this. Just do this. <laughs> it's not asking a lot. I really, you don't even have to hit subscribe. I'm not even asking you to subscribe. Just do this to the thumbs up uh, icon. That's it, man. Uh, TJ, what is up, sir? Good to see you. Uh, next time uh, to, uh, to Ruben, to, uh, next time offer to Ruben to float you the money. Nice. Uh, and, that, and, and then I'll be, <laughs> that I'll be happy to come after you. I'll be having to come after you to pay it back, and I'll have to be saying four key words, as you all know. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Mysterio Bagley shared the other day. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Nick, where can I see your stuff? Okay. An email to you didn't get through. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, Pre-Black Friday sales, everybody. Yes, listen to Nick on his show, The EXP. Let me just do it quickly. Might, might as well do it now. Um, here, actually, you know what? This is this is the easy one to remember. Okay, youtubecom exp But, but let me do this, everybody. And you can test it out for me, Nikki, because uh, I don't know what happened last week. But uh, that should be the direct link to this Friday's EXP show. All right. Where Nick is gonna have, uh, like I said, pre uh, pre Black Friday specials. All right, so please uh, check that out. And I'll do a, I'll do the prom promo again later in the middle of the show, Nikki. Um, and uh, thanks for confirming that. Yes, we were thinking about the same one, Rick. Yeah, exactly. Um, Shin Kazama. I realize I'll get hate for this, but Cal equals ninety eight percent overpriced art. I saw. Well, you're not, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of hate. Here, maybe if you did it in the chat of the Cal YouTube channel, maybe I don't know. People usually are free to speak. You know, they've always been free to speak their mind on my channel, and you know, we're we're all pretty. We've always always been a pretty. Uh, you know, we debate it here, and you know, nobody's like telling each other off. Nobody's ever been an asshole on this channel. So, and I appreciate that. Um, I saw lots of markups of ten to twenty times from sales just a year ago. Who are they trying to fool? Yeah, I. I, I don't know. I didn't see that. I, I did a few searches at 11 o'clock in the morning yesterday when it opened. I didn't find anything I wanted um, other than those three pieces I mentioned before that I considered. Um, and then um, I left. And that's it. I checked early this morning. I didn't find anything else so when I did my searches. And that was it. So I left again. Um, I will say, though, Shin, that what one thing I noticed, one thing I'd like to check, just to keep uh, my pulse on the hobby, so to speak, um, I did notice uh, that as of like two and two o'clock in the morning, so like last night, two hours after midnight last night, um, the sell through percentage was only at six percent. Now, I say only, though in past uh, 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 Capcons, I, I I don't know what the you know percentage the sell through percentage was after the first day. Um, so I can't really compare, but I, I, I can say that I've always found website update sell through percentages pretty low at 10 to 15%. And yet that's what often happens. Um, so 6% sounded really low. And the, the so the, the feeling that I got after Saturday was, okay, this kind of goes hand in hand with what we've, a lot of us have been feeling that, you know, the market's not down per se except some pieces here and there you know um but that there does seem to be 
a hesitation. There are people that I guess are just kind of holding on to the money and not wanting to spend right now. What do you, what do you, have you felt that Carl? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I feel like, like the, the bread and butter, like smaller price pieces or sell, like there's, there's, there's things available for the entry level collector. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think those numbers, like some of the pieces that I try to sell are kind of in that like thousand dollar ish range. And like, that's a, you know, that's a specific, you're looking for a specific buyer on that. So like, so you, I think people are a little more guarded and they're a little more selective as, as where they want to put that money. So I, that's, I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, that, look, I, I just feel like there's a, a bit of a, you know, hesitation to it's spend, like, well, yeah. you know, Which, uh, yeah. and it could be, I think it's a, it's a confluence of factors. Um, probably the two biggest ones being, well, the economy, while it seems to be, if you look at the, you know, actual numbers, GDP and all that stuff, if you don't want to get that technical about it, it seems way better than I think it is. Um, if you get to ground roots level, the average Joe on the street, uh, average families, it seems like, you know, some of them are having, you know, a, a tougher time. I think the COVID um, what do you call it? The, um, the COVID inflation costs on everything, right? Not just collectibles, like food, especially food. That's ridiculous. Like the cost of food is for the most part, yeah, still yeah. ridiculous. Right? Never corrects back. It never, yeah. it never comes back down to. Yeah. You know, ga gasoline's, you know, it's gone down some, but it's still high, you know? Um, so, so yeah, cost of a lot of things are just way up and, and, so and, and, and all of this, you know, this hobby is, is unnecessary. I mean, it's, no, it's right. yeah, not, yeah. you know, you can do, there's a lot of people that can just take a step back. Like, I'm, I'm just going to take a break from, from collecting right now and then come back to it when, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I got to feel like that's happening. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe so. Maki Poo Poo, what is up? Hello, hello, sir. Good evening, Caesar. Good evening. Spend most of my money on next Friday show. Nice. <laughs> hey, it's good. At least you found stuff, and you you blew all, most of your money before Calf Live. Did you did you get anything at Calf Live? That's the question. Or did you spend all the money before you hit Calf Live on Saturday? Um, but yeah, that's awesome. And who knows? Tune in this coming Friday. There might be even more stuff for you. But um, Daniel says, Michigan fan. Uh, this will be my only time tuning in. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Oh no! Another guy from Ohio. He's he's, a, he's an Ohio guy. There's a lot of collectors in Ohio. I have to say yeah. that uh, Daniel. Um, and so yeah, a lot of Ohioans have been here to hear me praise Michigan. So you know, it's all in good good fun. It's all good love, you know. But uh, yeah, what, what what can I say? We got to cheer for whoever we cheer for. Uh, yo, my cat page. Okay, so honestly, the stream is a little more laid back. Oh, sorry. This gene, a little more laid back and interactive. Uh, thank you, Gil. Yes, the interactive part, especially, it's what I love. I love to talk to all of you. I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to feel like it's it's a bunch of us in a room, even though we can't hear those of you who are not in the studio, right? But uh, that's that's what makes it most fun for me. That's what I love a lot. So um, it's most I, certainly I, more of a of a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Carl. Um, so thank you, Gil. I appreciate that, and I, I'm glad that you appreciate that. You know. Uh, so, yeah, thanks. But people will go back to look at Mr. Red Jack's booth first next time. That's for sure. Yes, that's for sure. Oh, that's what I got before. Uh, previous point. Okay, I saw that. Uh, look, look at the high-end stuff. The low-end stuff are bargains. Uh, that is true. That is very true uh, to everybody who's thinking that every you know, Shin Kazama, I think he's referring to you. Um, let's see. What's up, Dad Evan? Happy holidays to you. Happy Diwali. And look at that. So I got Dan Evan. We got Caesar. Um, we'll see. We'll see um, who else. Who else uh, might pop in? Mickey's probably listening, but not typing anything yet. Um, next week, I might as well just tell you really quick, everybody, just because I'm very excited. I'm, I'm super excited to have Carl here and to get into the show and tell. But I'm also super excited. To let you all know, and I want to say it now that there's still 29, 30 people um, before people start dropping off, because I usually wait until the end of the show to mention this. Um, super excited to, to let you know that next week, I'm finally, finally putting on another episode of Comic Art 
round table. It'll be my first round table in just three weeks short of a year. I cannot believe almost a year passed since my last round table episode. Um, that's, that's my favorite of the series that I do. That's my favorite one. And if you want to know why it's my favorite, it's simply because what I just said earlier. I just love to talk to everybody. And of course, the more voices we can hear and faces we can see, well, the more I like it. And so Roundtable is the one show where we usually have, you know, three people plus me. So it, it's, it's, it's more voices that you get to hear in real time. And that's why I just, I just love that. Um, and the, and, the, and the, the crowd, every, the, the rest of you uh, in the live chat uh, tend to get more animated and active during um, Roundtable episodes, I've noticed as well. So it seems like everybody seems to like the Roundtables a lot more. So really quick. I'll come back to the comments in a second, but really quick, let me do this just to show you. Um, here is next week's thumbnail, and I haven't scheduled it. I just, I just, I just, less than an hour before tonight's show started, I uh, completed the thumbnail. Um, so I'll probably schedule this tomorrow or late, late tonight. But here's the thumbnail for next week's episode. It is Comic Art Roundtable number six. Comic art from Infinite Sources, and this is gonna have not. I'm just. I'm trying to make up for the fact that it's been almost a year since my last episode. So rather than have only three guests, I have uh, managed to <laughs> corral five people to come in and spend time with me uh, next week and spend time with all of us. Um, so that'll be uh, Cesar Alvarez. We got Scott Brown, Hoarders Hide over there on the right. And then in the front row, left to right, we got Mickey Anamanthadu, Tony NYC. Um, well, that's his AKA, Tony Chavez Jr. And of course, the aforementioned Dan Evan on the right. So um, looking really, really forward to seeing that. That's the, it'll be my first, as you guys know. That'll be the first time I ever have more than three people on the screen with me. Um, so that should be a lot of fun and, and, and exciting. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, having all of you guests here. And hopefully a lot of you guys in the chat uh, come back uh, to tune in for that one. I think it's going to be a, a fun time. Um, okay, so before we get into the um, show and tell with Carl... Let me just take one last look to see uh, comments. I don't want to skip any that I don't, I don't have to. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Ah, uh, yeah, Gil, sometimes you need a quick buck. The way I look at it is that some of my artwork now is appreciated significantly, and I have a good steady income. There you go. Um, so Dan's holding off. Look at that. There's speaking of people, right, of what we were yeah. talking about earlier. He's holding off. Inflation caused a lot of pain for families. Also very selective. There you go. So that's it. So yeah, I know it's happening. You can feel it in the hobby, you know. Um, Lee says, sold a couple of items on CAF. Uh, this weekend, I'm assuming you meant. I have put out a couple of offers. Okay. That's cool. So you're still looking to buy, but also looking to sell. So you're swapping out anyways, right? So it's kind of like not new money going in. So that, which is what a lot of us do anyways, you know. Uh, you can also negotiate and save when buying new art. And you get the money back somehow. Right. Um, believe me, I researched all the prices on each piece. Really? He's not doing well. Okay, and time may be shorter than I think. Oh, man, I'm, I'm really, really sorry to hear that, especially with all the bad luck you've had with your mom. And thankfully, she's doing much better now. But to now hear it's your brother that's got, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really sorry to hear that, man. Um, but what a, what a, what a, you're a tremendous person, I must say. You're 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 a terrific human being. Them to do that for your brother, anyways. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, my heart goes out to you and your family. Um, let me see. So, <laughs> Caesar's at three shows coming up: Hakes, <laughs> Weiss, Heritage, Urania. I know, man. You're right, but but for years now, haven't we been able to say the same thing? There's always too many shows. It feels like to me. Right, Carl? I mean... Yeah, I mean, I, 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 out of responsibility, I tune out most of them just because it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know. I get into enough trouble as it is. I don't need to keep, uh, keep looking for yeah, new yeah. avenues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I, 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 
get what you're saying. Absolutely. It's and listen, even me, I, I, I admit, um, when I'm in a when I'm in a in a in a sort of phase, which I kind of am in now, I spent a lot of money this calendar year. And so I'm kind of cash poor right now. And so I'm like, and that's that's also part of the reason I was like, okay, even at, at, as cheap as those pieces were that Brian had, I was like, you know what? I'll just let somebody else have them, you know? Um, yeah. Like I'm said, kind of like, yeah. The stuff you picked up, though, was was the stuff that you've been waiting on, too, you said. Yeah, the that, stuff you know, that, that I picked that up finally popped like, up. Yeah, it was like, like I had said on the previous show, like the, the, the Tom Grummet floodgates opened up for the first time in years. Right. And like all of a sudden, all these things that I had been waiting for for years were, were coming up one after another, after another, after another, not only at not only at um, at auction, but at the same time as it was happening at auction, one after another, people came out of the book. A couple of people reached out to me privately. I was like, oh, shit. awesome. <laughs> but, oh, my God. What am I, I going to do here? Thanks, isn't that, it's like a. Yeah, it's always how it is. I, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. That's my point, right? It, it's, it's, it's just how it always goes, right? Like when you don't want it to be happening, it, that's when it all happens, right? And yeah. then wish it would happen, and it, it's just nothing, nothing. It's great. nothing, you know. Yeah. yeah, but but yeah. Now, thankfully, I'm grateful. I was, I was cash flow positive and and and, and very uh, cash flow rich at the time. That the floodgates open, but now I'm cash flow poor. <laughs> so, so it's like okay, I I, I got I, and, and you know the way I am, I, I can't help myself. I, I I'm very crafty in the way that I've I've always collected. Even when I'm cash flow poor, I have creative ways of using credit without paying, just to buy me enough time to maybe sell some yeah. art, right? Yeah. To pay for, uh, and 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 right. So I'll I'll buy art even with no money in the bank, right? Because because I just know how to play around with the credit and not pay interest on it. You know, um, it's a it's a game. I mean, you got to play the yeah. game. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know. I, I've been playing the game forever, and um, I don't mind telling you all that's the game I'm currently playing. <laughs> I went cash flow basically poor, and stuff came up, and I bought a couple of things. And so now I'm cash flow negative and I've got to find some, you know, I got to sell some stuff. But so, 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 so that means I'm probably going to be doing a sales show in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> just to offer a few cheap, you know, maybe like low end art for people. Uh, yeah. Just to see if I can raise some money, whatever, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's like, there's, so we were talking before, like I, that's how I, I, if I have to put something on, on a credit, I, I have some, some things in the collection I have earmarked for, you know, some toys or collectibles or whatever when I need it for art. So as soon as I see some something pop up and then I'm like, okay, well now I gotta, you know, move out some of the collectible stuff. So it's just it's just playing a game. So Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um Daniel says, I turned oh, I tuned out in Cal this go around. I I bought something last three times, but this year conveniently forgot I forgot conveniently. Um, yeah, man. I, 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 what I wanted to say earlier is, is I've done that too. When I felt like, oh, you know, e sometimes I, I even do have the money sitting in the bank. I'm, 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 I'm cash rich sometimes, and I'm just not in the mood to spend or to be tempted to spend on stuff that I, unless it's something I, I you know, I really, really want. And sometimes it's it's hard to, to, to beat that temptation. Um, and so the best way I found if I don't want to be spending money is I just tune out. So I, I, I tuned out to several heritage auctions this, this calendar year alone. And I don't talk about the Wednesday ones. I've actually tuned out most of the Wednesday ones this year. But I've tuned out of at least three of the big ones this year, this calendar year. Because I just didn't want to spend. You know, yeah, but with the uh, with calf like the the show this weekend, I I only looked. I had my my keyword searches, and I figured if it wasn't something that was within those that I've already identified as things that I want, then I didn't really need to browse any further. So, and unfortunately, well, fortunately, uh, Nick had a Capullo page that I picked up. But but yeah, so they, they yeah. just looking for just those specific wants, and then that was that was it. 
Exactly. And that's and that's and that's uh, kind of um, what I was saying um, in the sense that what I would do is. I would check, OK, is there anything good from Tom Grummet? Right. That's my main focus. And if there's nothing, I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to look at what else yeah. they have. I'm just going to sit this one out. No need to browse. Yeah. Right. No need to browse. And that's it. It'll go by. I won't notice it. I won't feel it. And that's it. And and it feels good when life like, will go hey, on and things are good. Yeah, 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 things are great. I still have the money in the bank. Nothing happened. Everything's all right, you know. So um, then, uh, link to Mr. Red Jack. Uh, what are you referring to? Do you mean do you mean his uh, comic art live thing? Because that's what we're talking about. Is we're talking about he was selling stuff at the comic art live, the convention on on Cap this weekend. Is that that's what we're talking about? Uh, hey, there he is, Mickey. I sold a few pieces of calf live. Congratulations, and made one medium range purchase. Excellent. It's all turnover. It's good, you know. And look at that. Karen's being nice to everybody. Uh, hello to Daniel. What else we got? Lee says, I think I just spent over what I sold. Well, it, it's it's almost a wash. That's close enough. That's not too bad. Couldn't pass it up. Well, that's important too. Carl knows the piece. Ooh, I know. Huh. Which, which uh, Simon are we talking about? Um, yeah, I think he's. Uh, I want to think what he would have had. I, I don't. I, 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 I didn't pay too much attention. Oh, he discounted. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. I. I mean, I'm sure that I, I, I've seen it in the past. Um, if Lee's referring to it, because Lee and I have some similar interests that we've we've kind of crossed paths and and had eyes on the same pieces before. So okay. we've had had discussions there. So I'm curious. Is it the Planet of the Apes related or? Because <laughs> he, because they, because um, there's some really cool uh, apes covers by uh, Mike Allred that that okay. I, I have one of them, but I, but I was looking at some other ones. So could be, could it be that? Okay. Um, Dan says yes. His gallery sale. What's the name? Oh well, I mean, I, I hopefully somebody put it in, but it's over because because it's it's like a weekend show. Mention that the the, the uh, virtual con on calf is over now. So. It, I think it's over. Does it go until midnight, or is it over like at six o'clock on Sunday? Still, I, I, I don't I think know. The official end date is is uh, ten o'clock. Is the the oh uh, okay ten o'clock really? Eastern time? But then everything shuts down. Oh okay okay. Um, I don't know what he called his booth. I'm sorry. Um, if somebody knows, please let uh, Dan the, the, Dan know, please. Um, it'd be great to hear how you manage your credit for unexpected items. I would also be curious to hear your thoughts on the tax man and how to navigate that. And again, maybe not a good idea. Exactly. Um, so Brian Norton is his booth. Is that all it is? Okay. Thanks, Jason. All right. Oh, okay. So it is Simon Miller. Okay. Yeah. That, I'm just doing some browsing now. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to figure You're out who was. He's talking about. Okay. Oh. Okay. I think, yeah, that's cool. That's, that's. Yeah. There's one I, uh... I'm yeah, and then Mar Marcus yeah. is saying to check my last name, Norton. There, there we go. Um, or you know what, uh, Dan, if you if you do a search for, um, you know, you can you can target your search for only so it only shows you the sold items. Um, oh, that's why I'm not seeing it. Do a search for sold items, and in the search box the, for the search term, put. Um, put Ordway, O-R-D-W-A-Y, okay? And it, there shouldn't be a ton of Ordway pieces that have sold. One of them is a, um, the Power of Shazam Splash. And that would, that would, that was a piece that he sold and you could click his name from there. Well, that's, that's Jim Warden, right? No. Is that what he's talking about? No. Oh, I, oh, oh, because I know, because now, uh, I, um, Jim had some stuff from Jerry that he posted. Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. That's that's yeah, yeah. That's that's different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I, yeah. I I I shouldn't be searching while I'm half paying attention to while you're talking. No, no, <laughs> I'm trying no. to figure out what the, the piece that Lee got, which I'll, I'll 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 find it later. But that's awesome. Congrats, Lee. <laughs> Everything goes. Yeah, congratulations, Lee, for uh, for getting it, especially at a big discount. So that's awesome. Okay, everybody. Um, I caught up with all the the, um, the comments and the in the live chat, and um, we've had a great time talking with one another. Um, before we start showing the art, um, 
Carl, uh, as we always do, uh, would you mind perhaps being a lovely, lovely soul? <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, just tell us a little bit about how you got into comics and uh, how that, and, and, and if you can, because I love details. I like yeah. the timeline. I like to put the timeline together. Sure. Um, so try to give years, if you can, of when these things happen. Specific dates. Um, it was a Tuesday, I believe, I first saw. Including yeah. the day <laughs> of the week that it was, exactly. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, I'm kicking you out of the studio, you know. Um, but no, yeah, and then yeah. And how that eventually got you into uh, to, to get the artwork, you know? Sure. Uh, so superheroes have always been uh, around. I mean, I remember, like, the Christopher Reeve Superman movies were always in my conscience that this, I, I don't remember a time when that didn't exist. So I grew up watching those, um, earliest exposure to superheroes were like super friends. Batman 66 was always on like reruns. So they, the, the DC characters have always kind of been there. Um, and then I, I action figures and superpowers, uh, secret wars, the Marvel characters. So, so I was, was, was that's how I was first introduced to comic characters. As far as comics themselves, I have two older brothers, and we always had some comics around, but nothing that I really picked out or gravitated towards. Um, they were just around. I just remember them being, you know, there. But uh, it wasn't until I was in my teens that when I when it was, I mean, it was the death of Superman. Really, was the first time that I thought, oh, I got, this is something I need to like read these. I, I want to find out. It was the news. I I, I didn't miss. When it first started, I, it was when the news was actually when I found out about it. So they, I was able to get uh, Superman seventy five, so, um, oh, and then I went oh, back. Hold on, yeah, so I, yeah. You mean you heard about it through the mainstream news? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So like, okay. I, I mean, well, it, it, that wasn't the first time I started buying weekly comics. I remember some things were like the uh, the Batman uh, eighty nine movie adaptation yep. Jerry Ordway did. Yeah, oh, beautiful. I remember reading that off the newsstand. At a, at a bookstore in a mall off of a rack you know, where my oh. parents were shopping or whatever. And I was just in the bookstore just reading it. Yeah, I didn't buy it. Yeah. So, um, and, and I was like, this is amazing, you know, because I was really into the, the Batman movie when that came out. And, and I don't remember exactly when, I think the adaptation came out after the movie. I don't, that I don't remember like timeline wise how it was, but I was really into uh, the Burton Batman movies. So that was something that was on, on my radar. But then, yeah, so when Death of Superman happened, that's when I, you know, found myself into a comic shop. And back then, they were everywhere. Like, I had a small town in Pennsylvania. I think we had three in one town and then two, like, in a town 15 minutes away, which was crazy. Now there's none in any of those. But, uh, but yeah. Well, so, so you were fortunate, at least, that when you... Yeah. When, when, when this Death of Superman thing in the, in the media got your attention... You all a place to go. Yeah, not only did you yeah. have a comic shop dedicated to serving and selling that type of stuff, but yeah. three of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a great, which is crazy. That's really just like yeah. that's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that that do you, do you still live there? Not in that area. No, I mean, it's like, I, but yeah, I'm a couple couple hours away now, but still in, okay. still in Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah, okay, but I but I do know there's there's nothing there now. Okay, and and what about right now? The, are you are you in a place with any store at all? Yeah, I'm I'm just outside uh, Philadelphia, so oh, there's okay. there's there's plenty of places to go. I I don't go that often. I mean, there's certain times there's certain things that will get me to to go to a shop, but I don't have a a pull list. I, I don't oh, okay. you know. I, yeah. I I do read I read some comics on my iPad, so I do di the digital option. Um, okay. just because it's just I I don't want a whole lot of more comics in my house <laughs> we've, i've got we've, yeah we've, we've talked about this on on several episodes here yeah. i'm in that same place as you are except i'm behind because i'm so old school i i, I still haven't psychologically been able to get myself to, to to you know do the digital thing yet you know but yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm i find i for the last few years i've found myself really being more selective on should I buy that trade? Should I, should I, cause I don't have space for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll still go back and buy some collected editions, like some hardcover books or whatever of a story that I, that I really like. But I, I do, I do the, um, the DC, uh, online description subscription for the, uh, digital comics, which I like cause it has all the old, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mall kiosk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it has all of the, 
like older comics that I I would want to revisit anyway. Um, yep. And then there are there's some I think they're six months behind current publications, but there's just not a lot that I want to read. I, I I'm very much in that nostalgia phase where I just would rather go back and read the stuff that I yep. love. And there's there's plenty of that that I can revisit and oh, sure. feels new because I haven't read it in thirty years anyway. So sure, sure, sure. And believe me, you are not some kind of a uh outlier here yeah, no, I, yeah. Tons yeah of I, I, I kind of think yeah tons of tons of readers like who were people who were readers let's say when they were kids and who stopped reading and collecting at a certain point and are now in their 40s and beyond tons of us are exactly like you where it's yeah. just uh, it's just easier to like go back and read the stuff that I know I'm going to like because I read them back then and I remember liking <laughs> it. Just read it again. Yeah. Rather, yeah, rather than take a chance on this, you know, newer stuff, yeah. you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, um, so I, so, so yeah, so that, that, that got me in and then I was hooked and then that kind of snowballed into other aspects of, of the, uh, DC universe, like, like Nightfall, Batman, um, the return of Superman led right into the introduction of Kyle Rayner. So I was kind of on Green Lantern for a while. Um, so a lot of, so I was on, on a bunch of comics for a while. Then I, I graduated all through, through college. I kind of was a little more selective just because of budget. Um, yeah. After college kind of fell off because got a job, had no money, uh, <laughs> had to pay rent. <laughs> and then I was, I was out of comics for a, a long time. And it was uh, the the new Fifty Two announcement, but specifically Greg Capullo on Batman. Yeah, yeah that was what because because I was a fan of of Capullo when he was on um, X Force, and then he moved over to Spawn. So I didn't start. I, I read some of Spawn, but I moved over when Capullo took over. So it wasn't like I was never really like a McFarlane. You know, okay. I had nothing against, but it's just I wasn't reading that Spider Man yeah. at the time. Um, sure. But yeah, so I kind of followed Capullo's. Um, career over there, and then, yeah, uh, so that's what that's what got me back in, and I was reading comics for a while, and then I fell off again. So, <laughs> so, so let me let me take you back real quick. Um, yeah, yeah. Superman seventy five. Yeah, I, when that happened, how old were you? I was at that magic age of like twelve, thirteen, yeah. fourteen, somewhere. Uh, yeah, math yeah, is yeah. hard. I don't, I don't somewhere right in that nineteen ninety two. So yeah, so yeah, so it was like I think I was thirteen and then fourteen in ninety three. So yeah, so it was I was like the perfect age to just eat that up and be yeah, yeah. you know completely enamored by yeah. everything that was going on. So yeah, yeah, it's exactly what uh, what Matt you know had been saying when we did our uh, our Superman show a year ago, right? Um, yeah, because he's you know you guys are around the same age and um, and so is Jason. Um, uh, a bill bill's a little bit older, but still, yeah, you guys were at that what I call that perfect age. Like I started collecting yeah. reading at twelve. To me, I thought that was perfect, you know. Um, but what I wanted to know though is what so what when you did the Superman seventy five thing, um, where did it go from there? Like how 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 much did that sort of rope you in in terms of? monthly or we actually weekly because there was four titles for superman yeah but getting completely story is okay yeah and, so, and for how long did you continue that how long did you stick with all that craziness and suit in the whole superman universe in superman i stayed until the when superman red kind of came okay. around when they when they did the blue red split yeah yeah, the um, split. yeah I, I i i i enjoyed that story um, I thought it, it, it kind of co coincided with like two things. I was, that would have been like 97, 98. So I was graduating high school and college, uh, limited funds. So I kind of, I had to pick and choose. So, so the weekly book, I just dropped off and oh, then I, I would, did you, yeah. Did you, did you just say 97, 98, you were graduating high school? Yeah. And I was almost 30 dressing up like, uh, uh Southeast LA, uh, gangbangers to take pictures to put on uh instagram like 30 years later but anyways yes go <laughs> yeah yeah that was yeah that was, <laughs> yeah, that was, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why yeah so i would i was like the young teen when when it came out and then i, I stuck with the, the superman books for like four years 
It would have been like 92, okay. 93 to 97, 98, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, and then I just kind of would pick and choose different different. I was still buying comics, but I just, I, it was a way to, to, like, Superman budget was like every week. <laughs> so I was like, nah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta just stop that. Um, look, at, look at, look at, look what Marcus says. Did you stay until the triangles left? No, no, because that was, that was actually. Ooh, there's like because the the triangle changed to the S shield for a while. Uh, it was no oh. longer the triangle. <laughs> so there's a whole debate on when the triangle angle a triangle era ended. Uh, yeah, because Mike Carlin got promoted, and then he was no longer in, in uh, overseeing the Superman titles. So editorial it just changed, and it just was was different after that. And I never I was like, mm, no. but um, but yeah, I, I, it was before the triangles went away is when I, okay. I I left. Yeah. Okay. And I just want to make it clear again, because I said it before. I mean, because you know, Matt and, and and Jason and Bill, they I mentioned it when we did our Superman show last year. I just want to reiterate, it still freaks me out when you guys keep referring to those years as the triangle era. Because I honestly Never heard anybody use that term until like a couple of years ago. And it, it was probably you guys like seeing you on that group, those groups yeah. on Facebook and stuff. And I was like, what the hell are they, what do they keep talking about? <laughs> triangle era, triangle era. What does that even mean? And then yeah. when they told me, right, I was like, you, you, you refer to that as an era based on when they started and stopped. Putting that stupid triangle with a number inside, which so, I used to just ignore. Like, what? Like, it's how did you ignore it? It's like the reading order. What are you? What are you talking about? It was like the. No, but like I said, like I said last year in that show, I was like, "Well, if you were like really into it, right? Like a lot of people were, um, and like you really were reading Superman, you didn't really need the numbers because you knew that the." Yeah. Then they had four titles was so that they could put one and put one out with every week of the month. So there's every week there's a Superman. Every book, there's a, yeah. and you knew that okay, if you're gonna go get your, you know, whatever Superman book is coming out this week, you knew that's the book to read. <laughs> and at yeah. the end of every story, it told you continued in. So you knew what 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 it, like you don't need those triangles on the cover. Come on. Yeah. I mean, it helped. <laughs> I was I was thirteen. There was something I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I admit, I admit. Look, it's true. It's it's a it's a fascinating thing to talk about. In in all honesty, because I admit that it does make a difference of what depending on what age you were when all this kind of stuff happened, yeah. right? Because I was already I was already a young adult, right? So to me, it was just like what what what, what are you wasting what time? These idiots need this for yeah. What is Crap. Yeah, like, take that it, off. You know, You're it really off. helped with me. Sorry, so it really helped with me when I was going back to get the stuff because I because I kind of came on right when he when he died. So it helped me to kind of figure out what came before, and then I, I, re I finally read the, the the whole thing in the uh, the trade paperback, which which came out like almost right after that all happened. It was a quick turnaround for the the trade to to come out, and that's where I actually read the full story. Um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, again, yeah. And like, like, um, where is it? I uh, hear, like, Matt says, it helps 10 year old me. <laughs> yeah. Listen, like I said, and well, it's, it, see, this, these are part of the things that I don't think about when I say that, right? Because I'm drawing, I'm drawing on my own experience, right? Which we do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. But then I remember guys like Matt, right? With, like him and, and, and anybody else like him, where it's like, Oh, well, I don't have comic shops, and I got to go to this place, and and on, there's a spinner rack, and that's the only thing I can yeah. buy my comic, right? And and so, and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess for those kinds of people, that that it, would really be helpful, yeah. right? Like I said, it really helped me going backwards more than it helped me, you know, reading week to week, because it kind of told me what I what I missed and how to fill in the gaps. So, right. Uh, what's up, Mike? Only squares call it the triangle era. You know, you know when I when I first uh, heard the term triangle era it was not that long ago. It was like a couple years ago, like you were talking about. Um, in yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, it's not. Um, like I, 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 I've heard them referred to that, but but specifically the triangle era, 
um, in the DC, like the, what is it? The DC online uh, subscription, they have a reading order and it's, it's, it was labeled as Superman, the triangle era was the, the first time that I had seen it officially called that was on, was on the, the, the okay. app. So, Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. My buddy, Neon Dragon, who we haven't seen in a few months. He's been super busy. What is up? What is up, John? Um, thanks for dropping in. Um, he wants to know, what attracts you to Superman over all other superheroes? So, <laughs> you know what it really is? It's that, it's that window of stories. It's not, it's not necessarily that I love Superman over all. I just love the death and return of Superman overall, <laughs> you know, I, I, that, so it's not, I, I like all kinds of, of stories. It's just, mm. and characters, but it's, it's just that era specifically because it captured my attention. Uh, that's, mm. that's, that's why that's the focus of, of a lot of what I collect. So, so, so I need, to, I need to ask you then. So is that to say, cause I know that it's kind of like Matt, my, Matt's the same way. Like I found when we did our, our Superman sh themed show last year, um, I felt like, like, I just from seeing you know you guys commenting on Facebook, um, and then by what th some things that Matt and Jason were saying on the show last year, I got the impression that it really is for you guys or some of you guys much more specifically about the death and return of as opposed to really being an all across the board it, love of superman you know yeah i mean it, it's changed like i i've gone back I've, I've appreciated it as i got older i appreciated the um the stories for what they were for what they what the creative team pulled off like through the all all the titles and having mike carlin kind of oversee all of that i i've appreciated what what they did and the stories they told so I, I went back and I, I you know I read Man, um, Man of Steel stuff and then all the way through like the early the official Triangle area, um, right. but yeah. So it, it, but I still I enjoy Superman, um, but it's not like yeah that's the focus of of, of what I or my my, my favorite character because because what kind of segued into other uh, so nineteen ninety three was also the now that we're we're in the 60th anniversary of like Spider-Man and X-Men. That was right. the 30th anniversary of, of Spider-Man yeah. and X-Men. So they had, you know, um, the X-Men was the fatal attraction storyline with like Romita Jr. And some of those guys like that. I, I, I really like that story too. Um, I just, yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, it meant. Um, but it's just the, when it came time to start collecting, uh, my, I knew my collector brain would want to try to, have a set of something, but I didn't know what that set would be. But collecting X Men art, I, it it was too. I, I couldn't wrap my head around how to how to properly represent that era in my collection. I mean, it's financially for me like impossible with like Jim mm -hmm. Lee, his stuff. That's just that stuff's crazy. Right. Um, Superman, that was much more manageable for my collector brain to kind of tackle. So yeah, that's I still like that stuff, but it's just not what i focus on i got you got you good evening mikhail what is up sir i hope you had a fun time at comic art live this weekend lovely to see you um yeah no it it it, it, it it's all good it all makes sense i'm i'm um i've noticed that over the, the the years that with superman like i would follow superman art and see how it does and i tend to follow superman art from oh i would say like when it comes to like covers, covers and splashes, I I will follow them when they come like on the market from like the late seventies onwards is what I kind of like to look at, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but but when we talk about reading, my favorite era, if you will, is what I called always the post crisis era. So it, you know that's what I mean. I I. I, I... Mike Don't Carlin has said before. Don't yeah, turn yeah. Over. From there onward, yeah, that's when it's, I. It's the it's it's the same story. It's the same story into you know the the triangle era and and yeah. Carlin has said that if he thought of the idea sooner, he would have done it sooner. So it's not like it like 
as soon as that showed up, that was the beginning of anything. It just happened to show up uh, on an issue and then moving forward. Uh, but yeah, but that that all is one narrative, and that's to me is like the greatest Superman era story, it's just because it felt like Metropolis was alive. I mean, it was more like who yeah. was in Metropolis, not just about Superman, the supporting cast. Yeah, you know, because it was just it's it's like it's like. It's like the way, I don't know if you're familiar with it at all, but people will know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's the way that, like, when, when if anybody read um, Miller's first Daredevil run and he made New York City feel like it came alive, um, like, like New York City was a character unto itself, so to speak, so Metropolis became kind of its own thing, you know, yeah, with I mean, all these supporting characters. You learn to love all those supportive Bibbo. Who doesn't love Bibbo? You I, know what I mean? Yeah. Right? The whole Cat Grant thing. And, you know, yeah, it's just like this yeah. whole, the Superman universe became interesting as a whole, I think for the first time in history. Because before Crisis, it wasn't, like I was a fan of the character because of the movies, right? Because of the Christopher Reeve movies. But reading them, I was always kind of like, uh, it was just like, this guy had been around for 50 years at the time when I was a kid. And, and in 50 years, they could not have thought up of a single villain that could actually <laughs> compete with him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like it was no. always these, these joker loser characters they would come up with. It's like, what? So yeah. it, it doesn't make you want to read it. it. It's so ridiculous, you know? And then finally they started, yeah, burn comes in I and okay. Here we go. This and, is great. And it's a and it's an easy starting point. I mean, you could start there and then just keep going. So that always helps too. I mean, it's it's you know, in, in all that history of a character, if you can pinpoint like, okay, just start reading here and then enjoy it. And that's yeah, so that works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's up, Matt? Good to see you, sir. And um do we already talk about action 583 and Superman 423? We did not. Um, we are not going to talk about that. We gotta get that into the art now. <laughs> um, but we do know, Mikhail, that you have some art from that, that particular story. So everybody, please go to Mikhail's calf gallery and check out the art from that story. <laughs> really awesome. There's a little plug. Uh, there you go, Mikhail. Uh, if X-Men had triangles, I would have gotten into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, Jim Lee stuff, super expensive. Yeah. Well, yeah. Again, but yeah. it's funny, though, that, that you know, you, you say yeah <laughs> that stuff like was expensive right um um carl but by the other token you can also say well superman and art in general is way of more affordable than other characters right but but for you and people like you who want to go for the specific death return era well, now it's like you're talking. You might as well be talking about Jim Lee kind of prices, right? right? That's, that, that's that's true. So but the the way that I kind of so along those lines, if I would have to get like a Jim Lee piece for what, but what what X Men story would I? You know, the original, like the you know, I I wouldn't know. I mean, it'd be hard to to for my brain to wrap around how to how to put together a collection that properly represented that story or era and it just happens to be like superman was easier not cheap but but easier for 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 me to say i get to a point where i can say oh you know what i'm, I'm happy now this is i've got my kind of representations from each of the artists and i you know that's i'm good because i it's important to kind of have this point where you're like okay I, this is what I, this is my goal i'm good let's try to get there yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so i get it there's I all get I get it, even though I don't follow it myself. But I get it. Right. I'm not saying yeah. I am, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's just it, that's an easier way to say. If I get to that point, I could yeah. probably be happy. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, but yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll let you know when it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Warn me. Uh, what's up, Adam? Good to see you. Just want a page from the Kingdom number one showing a dead Superman. Um, I'm not up. On top of the super most recent thing, so I don't know what the kingdom is. Well, that's isn't that that was a follow up to Kingdom Come. Oh, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was a uh, an ongoing series. I think, okay. but like, like I want to say, like I don't. I mean, it was a while ago. I think that came out. Okay, but I appreciate Superman. I love to see. I, I love the character. Yeah. 
I love the character, even though I only, in terms of stories and art, I, I really prefer just, you know, again, Coach Cross's era for several years and pre that, not really, but I love the character, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, can we get a quick tour? I don't know, Carl, are you able to get <laughs> I, I, a tour? Uh, I mean, a quick tour? Not, not, not so much. I mean, it's, okay. <laughs> there you go. Any kind of, ah, oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> There you I mean, go. I can't, I, the way I had the uh, this set up, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be graceful or easy. So, yeah, yeah. Alan Moore did a bang up job. He certainly did. Yeah, that was that was good stuff. Uh, late loser characters, you leave Lex alone, Daniel. Oh, he's so he's talking about the the villains, his the Superman's rogue I, gallery. Yeah, no, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. I know. That's what I just wanted to say. Let's be, let's be. Look, on this show, I've always said, like, I don't, I don't, I don't lie. I don't like to lie to people, like, whatever. If you don't like what I have to say, that's fine. But, like, I'm not going to lie to make you happy, so to speak, right? He, you know? I, I, I guarantee you he's, that's like a, a joking tone. Okay. He's, he's, he's okay. yeah, he's, 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 yeah. Oh, no, and I know, and I, I can tell by how he wrote it. I, I get he, it. He's but not going to start flaming your, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just in case it's, you know, half, half, tongue in cheek, whatever, with yeah. a little bit of seriousness, I just want you to know, Daniel, um, I mean, I don't know if you, you agree or not, but like, and yes, I love Lex because he's he's classic. I get it, right? Classic, right? He's he's the guy. But when you think about the fact that, okay, Superman, the most powerful being in the universe, right? Other than Lex, because Lex is all about brawn. He's just a regular guy, and it's about you know brawn, right? Brains versus brawn. But you 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 can't just you know have him. So you got other people, but every other super powered villain that they created for him was lame like like who was good like can you even name one good one like really one just one good one like really good one yeah, i mean lex is like a good marathon villain he's like he's like always there to kind of be uh, a problem but yeah, like yeah. on a on a on a on a week to week scale on an ongoing like, basis yeah yeah, I get it. No, I, I love, you know, you always have that Lex from beginning, you know, from when he was first created. You know, it's great that they had that one guy coming all the way through all these decades later. But I mean, everybody else, uh, you always like Terra Man. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, really? Yeah. Like, that, that's who you, come on, man. So that's a problem. I, I really believe that that's why Superman, other than in the Golden Age, stole poorly throughout the 60s, 70s. 80s until you know the, the, the crisis era it's so poorly because people were you know the readers were getting older they went from being six to eight years old to like 17 and 18 years old and you know they're like well this is kind of lame this guy can do everything nothing can hurt this guy and these are the lame ass villains that you you put up against him like it's so sick it's you know it's silly like so of course nobody wants to read that you know so anyways it's, it's but, also uh, why the the post-crisis era was great because in making Metropolis a character it gave you something else to focus on, not just the fact that it's Superman that can, you know, it's yeah. limitless power essentially, you know. So right, so right. kind of help the stories. So exactly. What's up, Jason? Good to see you, man. Um, I thought this was a Superman show. It's not. He's a he's known. <laughs> Carl is known as a yeah. Superman guy, a Superman collector. But it's not a Superman themed show. There are some Superman pieces that we're, that we'll be showing, but it's it's, it's uh, most no. certainly a pillar of my collection. Is, yeah. is what I kind of it's, it's what it's what I started uh, uh, focusing on. Like, oh, because cool. once I stumbled onto comic art, I was like, oh, I could like get stuff from Death of Superman. So, and Daniel said it best. Hence, why my Jim Lee pages are all Superman. <laughs> Yeah, not, yeah. Not, not again to for everybody else. Not to say that those are cheap artwork. Cheap, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cheaper compared to his other stuff, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so Adam confirms you were right, uh, Carl. It's a sequel to Kingdom Come. Okay, nice. I always, you always have to come up with sequels to things that were good and were left alone, and decades later, oh, let's kind of Watchmen, Kingdom Come, Marvels. Like, what? Why? Dark Knight. Why? Just leave it as it is, you know? Whatever. Um, yeah, it was M Manga. Oh my God. Magog. Yeah. The oh, Magog going through time. Yeah, killing Superman. Oh, that's right. 
Where does he get those wonderful toys? Ruben likes boy, not man. Uh, nice. <laughs> I do love them both, uh, Mikhail. That's not true. That's not true. It's just it's just the the the, the man uh, from the era that I like, which is basically the similar eras to, to what Carl likes. Um, yeah, yeah, you, 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 they didn't really over the years come up too often, and then. When they started coming up here and there, they got too expensive. I don't have any Death of Superman art or Return or you know any of those follow-up series because by the time I sort of wanted to get it, the prices were already it's too high. Cool. I don't want to pay that, you know. Yeah, Parasite, Parasite. I'm happy you guys are going to say that, but let's be honest. Free Crisis, he was lame. Remember those? Remember how he looked? It was just it looked like this guy in a in a, a you know a regular muscular guy in a purple painted jumpsuit or whatever. Right? He looked like a regular man, you know, regular muscular guy at a gym, purple. So that was kind of lame, too. I feel like Parasite became really cool when he, I don't know when it was that they did it. When was that change when he became more monstrous and in the Yeah, 90s? it was. Um, yeah, it was because he was, he was introduced as kind of like a more like humanoid type uh, form. Um, Brainiac. And then, and then he, I think he like absorbed. Is that when he absorbed? I think he. So when Superman like really bulked up in uh, like that one story after um, after he returned, when his powers were kind of like overpowered. Oh yeah. Parasite. I think he siphoned off all that power, and that's when he then became that kind of more monstrous oh. form. Oh yeah, yeah nice. Oh, so that would have been like ninety thirty three, like ninety four. It was like soon after he returned. He had that. Uh, Right, so so that monstrous form happened because of initially siphoning Superman's. Power? Yeah, so yeah, because so when he when when Superman returned, he was overpowered, and then he kept kind of he was uh, storing more and more energy, and he wasn't exerting any of it. So he was kept storing it. That's when he like it was like really bulky, monstrous storyline. He looks like really right. kind of huge body, tiny head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, then he is that form, and then parasite. Okay, yeah, took care yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. But I like Parasite. Remained. Yeah, yeah. I, I like him certainly. Post crisis, I like Parasite. Yeah, yeah. But I thought pre crisis, yeah, I thought he was just another lamo, you know. Um, Brainiac is cool. Uh, um, one of the rare cooler ones. Um, it depends what version. But uh, Cyborg Superman, one of my favorites. Uh, Deathstroke. Everybody, I've mentioned it a bunch of times. Deathstroke is sort of my favorite DC villain sort of a ground level DC since he's not really super powered. Uh, it's Cyborg Superman, sort of my favorite DC villain. Love that guy. He's amazing. Super powered. I love it. It just reminds me so much of like T, T2, T right? The T2 yeah. aspect, of, right? That movie and yeah, I, I've said it a million times. If they would just take Superman for the movies, the next time they do a movie, make that guy Make that guy the villain. I could just see the posters. I mean, the, the potential to do, you know, the coolest posters. And, and just, it would be so easy to do, like, in terms of uh, uh, digitally and, you know, however you're going to do it with digital or real effects. I mean, it would be so simple to do the costume. Yeah. I think it would look killer. Oh, man. Yeah. Having those two guys go at it against each other, right? Like, who doesn't love these sort of, you know, you're the, the negative version of yourself. You're fighting the negative version of your uh, all. I mean, I know that's supposed to I be bizarre. That. Yeah. You know, yeah. bizarre is more of like stupid and lame, but like Cyborg Superman, right? The, the evil version of yourself. I mean, yeah, that's what they should do for a Superman movie, man. That's uh, don't get how military uh, trainer Superman doesn't beat him. <laughs> General Zod doesn't beat him much. I, I, you know, I don't even want to get into that. This is kind of part of the problem, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Mongo was great. DC Stags. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I wasn't. Isn't DC Thanos Dark Side? I, that's, how, that's how I've always been. Yeah. Uh, Gangbuster was the best. <laughs> I remember. I don't remember. I don't remember details of the stories, but I do remember loving those days of Gangbuster being around and Guardian, Guardian being in the comics. That stuff yeah. was fun. I really, really, really like that. Parasite and Brainiac. Yes, Ilya, what's up? Um, but Superman is the chosen one. The Grant, Gary Frank issues revived the Chris Reed nostalgia. Did they? Because I never read those. That's kind of interesting. And then Ron Marlon Ruben, the, the get off by Lawhon. 
<laughs> Come on, I'm not that bad. Batman is his best villain. Hey, that's kind of an interesting point. Hey, Scott, what's up, sir? Um, animated show. I never saw the animated show, to be honest. Um, where's Derek? We need Maxim to talk. Yeah, he's not here tonight. Bring back Vandal Savage. I don't know. Um, uh, Vandal Savage is awesome. All right, you got another fan. Fucked up tiny head, life felt didn't draw suit. <laughs> Ruben the Stroker, nice. Hank Henshaw is by for my favorite uh, villain. Oh, nice, Matt. Nice. You, me, and Carl. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. It was cool. And uh, got even more cooler later on in Green Lantern. Oh, you like that too. Nice. That's that's it. I got a bunch of uh splashes and double splashes from a, a an eight issue arc that Mike Perkins drew for Dan Jurgens writing. Um with um and they're all focused on um cyborg superman. Um so yeah. Uh, Bizarro, yeah. He's he's quirky and fun for the quirky silliness of it all, but I can't take him seriously, you know. Uh, love the backstory for Cyborg Superman. I agree with the movie. It can be story heavy and combining drama with action. Exactly. Thank you, Gil. You're the man, baby. You're the man. Thank you for coming back again this week. Uh done too much though. What's done too much? You mean they brought they brought they brought Cyborg Superman back too much, you think? Uh Loki greater than Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mix this fiddling. Um, I would say so. I would say so. That's see, that's another one of the whole lame villain thing. Like it's again, but it was created back when you know the comics were geared at six to eight year olds, right? It's it's yeah, uh, that's that's kind of, kind of the problem, right? So Thanos would be Marvel's dark side, exactly. Well, whatever, but you know what I mean. Uh, the equivalent for the for the other company. I love Marvel's Thanos in the film, but didn't like so much what DC did with Dark Side. Again, DC doesn't do very good stuff with their characters in the movies in general, right? So Superman's sa second best villain is Zack Snyder. Nice. But I'll put the first claim for those pages. <laughs> nice. Drunk Superman's back. You're not wrong, Marcus. All right. <laughs> Guys, it's been awesome and fun. And I wish this was a hangout <laughs> episode because I'd love to just keep chatting and, and whatever. But we did put together a bunch of uh, slides to show artwork uh, and, and give a little... Uh, uh, focus and shine on to, uh, to Carl's art collection. So, uh, Carl, you want to get into that? Sure. Let's, okay. let's do it. All right. Let's do it, everybody. So, and thank you, everybody, uh, by the way, um, for, for tuning in. Uh, let me just quickly, before I um, show the first piece, if I may, enjoying the show, clicking the thumbs up icon would be appreciated. As you see, it's scrolling on the ticker below. See? Right. I mean, how, how do you do that? Here he goes. Look at this. Slowly going. Um, yeah, everybody, uh, in all seriousness, if you don't mind, it would be awesome if you um, could hit the, the like. I know we have about the last I checked was 36 likes. So if um, if any of you like, who have um, haven't done so yet, uh, I think 37, if you haven't done so yet, please hit the uh, the like button, which is the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate that. That would be awesome. So thank you so much. Let me just get this off the screen. There we go. Um, and, oh, you know what? And I was going to say, um, hold on, hold on. Since we're only going to start the, the, the um, showing the art right now, why don't I just quickly, since we're you know, pretty much at the halfway point anyways, um, Let's show Nikki B and remind everybody to please everyone. Uh, Nick Perucci, who you may know um, from such programs as, no, just joking. Um, from the EXP here on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash the EXP. Um, and this is what he looks like. You all know what he looks like. Here we go. Let's just show it just in case. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, that a beautiful, he looks, he reminds you of Dracula, you know? But, uh, <laughs> There you go, Marcus. That one's for you, baby. Um, here we go. We have another one to show you. There you go. You see? Not much difference. Um, so every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, here on this channel right here, youtube.com slash the EXP, um, you can buy or claim, if you will, original art from Nick. Oftentimes, they are very affordable, entry-level type pieces, uh, but sometimes um, 
higher end stuff as well. So it's a good eclectic mix most of the time. And um, this week, as Nick mentioned earlier in the show when he dropped in at the beginning, he is having a pre-Black Friday sale. Um, so that's very, I guess, what we could we could um, call intrigue, if you will. I don't know. He, you know, obviously he hasn't given um, details as to what that's going to entail, but. The intrigue should be enough for you to go check it out on Friday. That's this Friday, and um, it's his show is on every Friday. But here, let me one more time do this. That should be the link to this Friday show, so you can bookmark it in case you don't want to subscribe. But do subscribe if you want to, please. And um, yeah. Oh, oh, he's gonna. Oh, look at that. He's telling us some of the details. Some of the pages will be at 25 to 50 bucks. So that's really, really entry level. So that's really awesome. Okay. So really, really good. That's good. Um, yeah. So everybody, go go check out Nick uh, Nick's show this coming Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, and see what he's got for 25 to 50 bucks. Plus, I'm assuming he's going to have the usual selection of, you know, $100 to $500 stuff. Um, yeah. So check it out, please. Okay. Um, I've scanned the, 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 the comments. I see it's all jokes for the last little while. So, um, <laughs> I think we're good to go. Um, thank you. Uh, the rest of you, everybody for tuning in tonight. Nice crowd tonight. 39 people so far, a little over three, three dozen. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, most, the most people I've seen tonight so far. So this, I want to do this last one last thing. Um, just to remind you, if you weren't here earlier when I did this, uh, next week's episode, my first comic art roundtable in about a year. Check this out. I'm bringing back not only the usual three guests, I'm bringing five people for a comic art roundtable number six, comic art from Infinite Sources. Um, so um, I'll leave the intrigue there. We're gonna uh, we're gonna basically talk about all the different variety of sources where you can acquire comic art from and um i guess we're all gonna just shoot the shit about you know what some of our favorite sources are and our least favorite sources to to acquire art from so um should be a lot a lot of fun um if for no other reason that there's gonna be so many of us in the studio um along with the participation of uh, the rest of you guys uh, in the chat so i'm um, really looking forward to that all right so everybody, um, if that is it, last uh, last time checking out the uh, comments, Nikki says the higher pieces. Ah, so even the higher pieces will also be discounted on Nick's show. Awesome, Nick. Exp Jersey Shore. Okay, always joking. And that photo says, "Get off my lawn." The one that I just put up. Come on, more guests equals more people to make fun of Ruben. That is true. That is true. Very good, Scott. Thank you. That is true. And more, more people for me to make fun of live right in front of my right in front of their faces. So that's awesome. It works both ways. It's two-way street, my friend. Um, okay. Um, let's get into this, everyone. Let's check out the artwork, shall we? And we are gonna start this evening's show and tell by showing, of course, what what can it be? It is gonna be a Superman piece. I just wanted to warn you though, all. Please avert your gaze from the right side of the screen. And I know it's going to be difficult, but try to force your gaze over towards the left because the colored version is some of the most hideous coloring I've ever seen, and it may blind you. Um, but focus on the original art, okay? And um, Carl, uh, tell us a little bit about this piece. <laughs> That era of coloring, uh, yeah, yeah, it was like when they first started doing the digital separation and yeah, yeah. So this is from the Trial of Superman, and uh, it was the first time after Return uh, where all of the characters from Return were featured. All the replacement Superman were were, uh, were featured in a storyline, and uh, this is when um, Hank Henshaw single-handedly takes out all of the the replacements including supergirl so there's superboy steel eradicator and supergirl so 
Right. This is yeah. So he was like the main villain of that of that story, and they were kind of coming to uh, to Superman's aid to rescue him, and then Hank Henshaw finds them and takes them out. So right. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Is... Like like when you see in the last panel. I mean, in the second to last panel. Yeah. I mean, come on, grabbing them by the head, smashing their heads together to knock <laughs> them out. Like, come on, right. that's crazy, right? Yeah, um, that the uh, the last panel is the the cover image of of that issue of of him um, hoisting up uh, oh, Steel yeah. and Superboy. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's cover image. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. This is I just yeah I just found this one randomly. Um, actually, I think it was I think it was NSN. I think I I think that's where I bought it from. Um, I saw it and I was like, oh man, that's like got all the guys that I want on it, and it was a good representation of uh, Hank Henshaw when when he was in his red red and black. Uh, Interesting, inter yeah. interesting that you interesting that you call it the red and black costume, uh, Carl. Because I have always thought of it as the orange costume. I always call it yeah, him in his orange mm -hmm. metallic costume. I've never seen it as red. It always seems orange to me. Yeah, he was in uh, uh, Superman Doomsday Hunter Prey. He like got it from one of Dark Side's like. Uh, I read like Hunter Prey what, Troopers. Was that, yeah, was that the first time that he he puts that on? Yeah, he he yeah. like he because he yeah yeah it is okay <laughs> okay yeah because I, I read it but I don't I um I, I don't remember the details yeah. I got like, terrible memory for that kind of stuff you know but uh, okay and, and and let me just ask you quickly what, yeah. how do you feel about that costume like, uh, I I <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, it's not my favorite look of his because I, I I love the classic kind of look of. Uh, uh, you know, he looks like Superman. He's an evil version of Superman. Um, right. But I, I like like I like that version because it was in that era that that I liked. Right. Um, I'm glad they right. went back to it. You know, went back to the classic later. Yeah. But you know, when when I was putting together a collection, I was like, oh, I, I, that'd be cool to have something with that look specifically uh, on it. So, yeah, I get it. Marcus says you may have a statue of it. I don't think they made one. Uh, okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was it wow. wasn't it wasn't a long for that that long. But uh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. But okay, yeah, I've got, I've, I've got a, I've got a few uh, pages from the um, Electric Blue Superman era um, that have that version of Cyborg Superman. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I love the Electric Blue costume. I always, I've always loved that costume. It's a, I, it's a I, great I, design. It's such a yeah. beautiful it's just design. Such a cool looking. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful design. Um, and so I love those pages just for that. Of course, they're by Grummet, um, Big Shock, right? Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've never put them in my gallery. I, eventually, I'll have to get to it. But um, yeah, no, it's fun. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So let us go to the next piece, everybody. And for that, we go to there commissions. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I figured. I figured. I made 20 slides like I typically make for most, but I thought, hey, this way I can get cheat. A couple. I, yeah, I get a couple extras, whatever. I love Especially it. since there's no way to there's no way for me to put the color version since there aren't any color versions, you know? Correct. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's <laughs> yeah. Uh the and actually it, it, it's great that you chose those because they exist for the, the same reason. So yeah, uh, my main goal when I first started outside of published that was just like if I could just get a commission of the, the goal started as you know each of the characters from those stories the de death and return by their uh the artists on, on the books uh, at the time so uh, i did the uh the superboy with the the memorial statue because i like the the joyful nature of superboy yeah. and then it places him against the memorial statue of superman so like there's a serious you know superman died uh, it, that happened but then he kind of superboy kind of comes on the scene and is just a uh, a different take on on superman obviously so it's just yeah. that more youthful energy but to have them put together next to the statue i thought was was, was a cool idea uh and then when it came time to get uh, a piece from butch uh the the opportunity was a it was it was tied to a a, a crowdfunding campaign and you could get up to two characters on a on a, on the piece, but I really only wanted Eradicator. But I thought, well, what if I got if I say okay, about Eradicator, and then throw in the statue as well, because then it, it also differentiates the serious nature of Eradicator against the joyful, youthful nature of Superboy. So, yeah. yes, I love I love how you put that. You're very well put, uh, Carl. I I love that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's nice. No, it's good. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Um, yeah. I mean, no, I, 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 yeah, no, I, I mean, this is I, I, I love all this stuff, but also the uh, Eradicator piece is an homage to the. It was a pullout poster uh, of Eradicator in the rain uh, next to the statue. So I wanted something kind of like that uh, to homage that poster, but also it works well with the Grumman commission that I have. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I just also wanted to say Matt that, um, I have been a big fan of Butch's since, since 1982, 82, 83. Um, so basically his entire career, um, huge, huge fan of Butch's. So, um, believe me, it, it, it's, you know, just cause I, you know, hardcore collect Tom's work does not mean I'm less of a, of a, of a Butch Geist fan. Um, so yeah, so no, no, Butch, Butch is absolutely awesome and always has been. So, and he's just gotten better over time. So yeah, I, I love the way that his like, you know, realistic approach now, like to the gritty kind of realism that he does now is, and, and it works again. I thought it would work great with Eradicator. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I love where he's at now. Absolutely. Uh, number one Marvel fan wants to know, uh, if you have anything framed, if so, what would be your favorite wall piece? Uh, I have some, I have some stuff framed. I'm very behind uh, on what I would want, where to be at, want, want to be at. But, um, so I, right next to me, I have the, the, uh, the Cyborg Superman commission that I got from, from Dan Jurgens, And that would probably be my favorite. I, inside the house, I have a couple of, uh, um, Capullo Batman pages I have uh, framed, but, okay. but yeah, that, the, the, the favorite framed piece is the the Dan Jurgens. Okay. Are you Superman. are you able to uh, point this and see it by any angle or not? I I uh, I'll do this. I'll just take it off the wall. Ah, look at that! Awesome. Hold on, let me make you bigger so I can everybody can see it better. Try to angle it here. But... Uh, there you go. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad we're doing this because I did not, I chose to leave this piece out of tonight's uh, yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all good. Yeah. So. You can't show it all, right? So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. Yeah, so that's awesome. And I love yeah, I, the I, I, very tasteful, understated uh, presentation, uh, Carl. Yeah, 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 I try not to be, you know, I don't want, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to be flashy with it. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be flashy putting like red and blue mats and all that stuff. You know. Yeah, I, I, I'm very. I was tempted by it, but then I kept coming back to it, like, oh, I'll, I'll just keep it, kind of, you know. Uh, that's so funny. I hope look at look at Hoarder's hide. I hope there is some color on it. <laughs> These guys all know how much I despise seeing color on black and white uh, artwork uh, presentation. You know. So there you go. Uh, I do have some, some uh, the the stuff I framed in the house probably might not like people might not like because I, I have a a, a pen, pencil and ink page together it's a, it's a court of owls page um, oh. I have them framed together because I you know I, I framed it with the, the the published page with the inks and the pencils and kind of told a story with with the the frame so. Okay. But I know some people are, you know, they don't they don't like how pencils and things looks to get look together and um, yeah. But I I like telling a story with those pieces that are in, in the on the walls in there. Excellent. All right, let us go and check out the next piece, everyone. For that, we have this. Nice. So, yeah, uh, I I love the the Alfred. Bruce dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love it more now that I have kids. Um, I yes. see Alfred as a different type of character than I always did. I, you know, I, he was like, oh, he's like the old butler. He you know, took care yeah. of him. But, but they always kind of, you know, glaze over the, he took him <laughs> after his parents died and raised him. Like they always kind of like, it's like, oh, now he's, now he's just of Batman age and he's angsty and whatever. But like you, you don't, you miss the, the Alfred took care of him as a kid. Like mean, it's his dad. I mean, that's his father. So uh, yeah. this this page I like because it's 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 Alfred helping Bruce uh, come to terms with getting the courage up to go to his parents' funeral. And he said, you know, look, if you if you muster the courage to go to the funeral, I'll I'll teach you how to how to fight and how to use this sword. 
So until until then, we're going to put it on the wall. But for now, uh, let's just go take care of what we have to take care of with your your parents' funeral. So yes, a uh, late comment from Karen wants you to know that it's a very cool framed piece, Carl. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, what is up? Good evening to you, Rich. Good to see you. And oh, and uh, <laughs> Scott wants you to know it's your art. Frame it how you want. Don't listen to Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> These guys all know I make my yeah. opinions very vocal, and some of them do not agree with my opinions, and that's okay. I mean, that's that's, that's okay. how it's gonna be. <laughs> I mean, you know, like th that's the one of the things I love about this hobby is that it's impossible to have the same collection as someone else. Yeah. So do do what you want with it. You know, like that's yeah. just how it, that's the nature of our hobby. Yes, very much so. Yeah, man. Different strokes for different folks, and. Like I always say, you know, it's your it's your art. Do what you want with it. Ultimately, it doesn't mean we can't have opinions, but ultimately, as long as yeah. you like it, that's all that matters. You want to frame it, uh, you know, in, in glowing lights, whatever, then go ahead and do it <laughs> if you think that it looks awesome, right? Like, Go for it. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, it doesn't mean that we can't make comments and critique it, you know? So it is what it is. But love what you have. That's it. That's, that's, all, that's all, you know, like, that's sure. all I, I, I say, so... Um, but yeah, very nice pace. I, I I really like. I really, especially for a non-Batman page, Carl. I thought this yeah, was that, a really excellent one. You know, that was that was what I mean. To, to get a Batman page, it would have been a lot more. Um, but I I just thought you know I, I really like, and you might have uh, show some other ones later. But I like the the Gordon Batman dynamic and the Alfred Bruce uh, dynamic. Yeah, so those kind of pop up in my my collection as well. I I I. Yeah, I, I I I think a lot of people kind of like that about you know the whole sort of Batman mythology. You know, uh, yeah. It's like I always say when we talk about X Men, you know, and everybody talks about the Burn X Men, Claremont Burn, Austin Run, or whatever. Um, I for me, that's what you know. I, I got into X Men reading those back issues, but like I I I loved I I became a lover of the X Men characters and the X Men universe. Not because of their powers. I mean, I thought the costumes looked really cool, but I didn't really care so much about the fighting as much as I did about the interpersonal stuff that always went on behind the scenes with the characters. Yeah. You know, that the, yeah. the, the that's what makes the, them that's what makes them interesting. I mean, there's this yes. there's the stuff they do to fight, but then the why they fight, and that's what you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dan Ruben had opinions on my. Uh, I'll see you next week, Dan. Uh, Carl Cyborg <laughs> Superman is my second favorite Jurgens <laughs> commission. Take take a guess which uh, who owns his yeah. first favorite. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Matt. <laughs> You're so funny. Well, I, I'll tell you, he owns my second favorite, so you know it works. <laughs> See now they, they want to give some more uh, ideas on what you can do with your art when you when you display it. Decoupage those frames. Hmm, interesting. Glowing light framing. Hmm. Ian, I wouldn't put it past you, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Ruben, the soap opera fan. I did used to watch Days of Our Lives back in the 90s for a few years, uh, religiously. I, I will admit that. Uh, what's up, Daniel? Um, yeah, so okay. Let us go on to the next piece, everyone. From SGM, we stick with Batman. I thought that would be kind of a nice little segue. And we're going to see this piece. There you go. Yeah, I I love this one. Um, so I, like I said before, Capullo on Batman brought me back to comics, and uh, I wanted something that was like a really cool kind of Batmany image on on the page, but you know, also had to keep it somewhat affordable. Uh, so I went with this one. I actually own. There's a the top image they used on a on a t shirt. And I had the T-shirt, so then when I saw that this one actually was available, I was like, "Oh, that would be fantastic!" But I, but but outside of that, I just love the. It's the early when he's you know in detective mode, kind of learning more about the Court of Owls, and as he's going to all their previous safe houses, um, I like the the owl eye, uh, you know, inset panels there. I, oh, I, I love those. Really, uh, I love those. Yeah. That was like that was for me. That's really what made me. Yeah, it, it kind of sold me on saying, "Okay, I got to include this one because I love, I love the design of how he fit Batman into the first panel 
And the way he did the underbuildings sort of follow the sort of shape of the underside of his body and cape, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of flows, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just really beautiful, and and then I was like, yeah, but ooh, look at the the eyelets of the uh, the court of owls uh, costume, you know. And it, it serves the purpose of showing the different architecture because they're going back into uh, Gotham's history. So it's showing that they were they existed in all these buildings that had been you know in in the city for so long. So having the architecture on the page with what the like the layers look like was was uh, very helpful, and I thought it, you know. Yeah. Serve the story well, so yeah, everybody's loving this one, man. Drunk, yeah, I, this drunk Superman says it's great. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do love this one. I and, and I do have this one framed together. I have the, uh, the, the, the pencils on the left. I have the inks on the right, and in the middle, I have the published page. Oh, okay. Wow. And then below that, I also have a, a panel of. Uh, the Court of Owls when they when they first debuted, there's a panel of them uh, with Talon in the Court of Owls. So I kind of it's it's uh, it's framed all together. So oh, that's fantastic. That's got to take like a lot of room though. Frame frame yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah, it does. But I, you know, like I said, I only have <laughs> I only have a couple things framed inside. But yeah, yeah, but I, sure. I like that they that they just it tells the story of not just the art but the production of the art so if you if yeah. you have the opportunity to have the pencils and the inks to to do i thought i, I should do something creative with them so yeah 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 no no, no why not and uh yeah, yeah i'm sure it looks great because it's a it's a great page uh it's a great choice if uh if you you know if you don't have a lot of room to frame stuff uh yeah. you know you gotta be more more selective on okay which <laughs> which one am i gonna frame i i feel like when you frame you know if again if you're really limited for space I would go with something that's very designy. It doesn't mean you have to. I'm yeah. just saying for me, if I was super limited, I would go for something like this, which is very designy. Um, Cause it just, and it's especially with all those blacks, the way it's the, the whole page is framed yeah. in black. I mean, yeah, everything about it. It's, it's this, this, this has to look pretty spectacular um, in your presentation. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I see every day. Yeah. And Nick said, even Nick says nice. And Nick, Time I know you Nick. mentioned uh <laughs> He, I don't know if you noticed, Carl. He mentioned earlier. Uh, oh, Carl bought some from something from me. <laughs> I did. Yeah, a a very reasonably priced uh, pull-up page. So, if you he want meant, a deal on art, go see uh, Nick Barucci. There you go. And uh, Nick, just so you know, uh, Carl did mention that he had bought one from you before you came in tonight. So there you go. <laughs> Looking forward to, to getting and it, it's it's one that kind of ties into my Gordon uh, sub theme. So it has Gordon on it, and uh, yeah, so it will, it will fit well in the collection. So thank you, Nick. Yes, and he says that you were very polite and easy to work with. Very That's kind. Great. Thank you, Nick. You as well. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So from there, let's hit more commissions. Um, we'll start with one commission. We're going to go back to, I believe, Butch Geis. Um, let's check this one. There you go. Yeah. So, so the first one I got was the Eradicator one because it 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 uh, it fit that goal of getting one from each of the of the guys that were on the books at the time. And then he opened up uh, a list for the first time in forever. Um, yeah. So I thought, well, I, I got to get another one. Um, so I I wanted to get something with black suit Superman uh, because I like the idea of so when the comics came out. He, whenever you saw the black suit, like the, him in the black suit on the cover, he had the short hair because I, I think it was an editorial change that they they added the hair later, or uh, if it was just intentionally done to kind of say, "Well, is this Eradicator? Is it Superman? Who is this?" to kind of add to the mystery of it. Yeah. But I thought, well, it'd be really cool to get a, a piece that had him with the long hair in the uh, Fortress of Solitude, kind of keeping tabs on the on the four replacements. So. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it'd be cool to if I, I could get him to put the characters on the monitors on the screen, and that would be a way to get all, all of them on there. So yeah, the best, uh, yeah, <laughs> bang that, for that, the buck. <laughs> so yeah, exactly, and that's what Jason says here. Smart way to get all the characters. Yeah, in that's a, that was <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that was the that was the goal. I was like, how could I like that'd be cool, you know? And if it's if it's the uh, the narrative and story, like that's I mean that's what he was doing the first time you saw him in the cover. He was sitting there, 
<laughs> the, you know, who watches the Watchmen style watching the yeah. uh, Superman. So yeah, absolutely. And I, I just I, I this I love the you know I love all the, the character work, but I, I love the lines on the floor, like the reflective. Oh surface. Yeah. like the I just that that you know I just I, I love that. So yeah, this is. No, it's brilliant. Very, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Um, I always, I always say, um, and drunk Superman wants you to know, Butch is so good. Yeah. Not commissions. <laughs> Did yeah, you get? Yeah, one? yeah. Uh, I saw. Uh, yeah, yeah. I found out who drunk Superman is. I, I do, I do know who he is. I, he, he uh, will remain you anonymous know, because you he's walking out? around drunk. Yeah, he's he sent me okay. messages while we're while we're. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, he has some he has some good ones too. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's beautiful, and and um, I, I like. I just love all of it. I love the fact that you get all those cool, kick-ass, realistic-looking face shots of all the others in the in the on the screen, yeah. the monitor screens. You know, um, it really makes it. Like it really makes it. If, it. if you had just done a, like, I love the very regal pose of Superman in the black costume, right? But I feel like if you would have just chosen, oh, single character. Like that with a kind of more basic background, eh, I would yeah. have been like, eh, it's okay. Like, but you know, eh. yeah, yeah. To, about to, to me, this is very much it, it sells the idea. He's like, all right, enough is enough. I gotta jump back into the fray here. So, and he's ready to kind of jump back into action. So, yeah, I, I love that about this piece. Yeah, it's uh, it's fantastic. And um, I want to say uh, good night, uh, Vivian. Uh, have a good uh, rest, honey. And uh, you're welcome. And what else we got here? Uh, love me some guys. I know you. We know you do. <laughs> the cyborg Superman on that piece. That's what. That's what Daniel's loving. That's what's the, uh, that, 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 That's for sure. Uh, oh, and uh, honey, uh, Karen and Dwayne uh, both also say good night to you. <laughs> She says good night. <laughs> She's so interactive. It's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Excellent. Um, and CJ says good night to you too. <laughs> she says good night back. Good night. Uh, <laughs> and so does Carl. <laughs> she, said, no, she says, okay, good night. That's enough. That's enough. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to uh, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. Um, so from there, from guys, here we go again. We this earlier we did the double whammy, and now but together, but now we're doing the double whammy again, except separate. So now we're gonna jump from guys to Grumman for one last oh. commission piece here. Yeah, I figured I had to show this. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the story, yeah, with this one, and it, so I wanted something that was like an all-encompassing piece, like something that, that had all the characters on there. Um, so it was, Matt Matt has a commission from Tom that is yeah. fantastic. Doug, actually, Doug Hazelwood just shared it again, uh, shared it today. Uh, and it was it was a piece that has all of them on there. And it's, it's, it's Superman knocking out Cyborg Superman with everyone else uh, kind of charging into. Uh, it was that piece that I saw online. That kind of, I was like, wait a minute, that's not, that's not a piece from, you know, published work. So, so it was the first time when I, I was doing like a Google search, you know, years ago that I realized like, wait a minute, like you can, you can get these guys to draw you stuff. You know, that, yeah. that was kind of like an aha moment, like, whoa. So, so, so yeah. So that piece kind of inspired this one. So it's like, how do I do something that's, that I haven't seen done before, but still feels like it could be something from that era. So my idea was uh, like, there would be like a, a a poster you would see in the nineties on the, on the wall of a comic shop kind of advertising the story or, or just, you know, selling, you know, a poster. So um, I asked Tom to put the, you know, all those characters on there with Superman, all the replacements. Uh, and the idea was then to put some of the supporting characters as headshots to kind of sell the emotion of the story, uh, which, which is what, you know, we talked about earlier, the, the citizens of Metropolis do yes. so well for those stories. So yeah, so I, I I left up the the characters to him. I just said, hey, something that that has the something that would fit the characters because I don't want to I don't want to tie his hands too much creatively. Um, but it's one of my idea, and he he came through with this, and I love it. So just the the look on Jimmy's face, like what you know, Lex is pissed off. Um, 
it just it sell it helps sell it more than just a an average uh, yeah. group shot, in my opinion. Oh, I agree. I agree. And Matt loves this one. He wants you to know. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Matt. Appreciate no, Matt's you, got, yeah, yeah, Matt's got a, a bunch of nice commissions as well. So, uh, I, I, it's not like it's not like he has to feel jealous, you know. Uh, yeah. No. 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 Yeah. That's. It's. And, uh. Yeah. It, yeah. And Matt has got some great stuff that I that I love. But but that's in, 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 in looking at his collection that like, early on, that's why I was like, you know, how do I do something like that? but yeah. unique and something that I can kind of have is like, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool, you know? So without stepping on toes on, on, you know, creatively on copying commissions, I just like the idea of like, I want to do something like that, but just as cool. Got so. you. Thank you, Nick, for everything. Good night. Have a good one. See you, Nick. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. What can I say? Um, let me come back to all of you here. Um, yeah. I yeah, know it's great. Uh, and like Daniel was saying, oh, I can't believe that hasn't been used like as a wraparound cover. Yeah, but we could say that honestly about like a lot of really There's cool a... large commissions that I've seen over the last few years of Superman that Tom and yeah. Butch and, and Dan Jerk, yeah, you know, fun. tons of stuff. Like you, they can't all become covers. Some, like, you know, some great, great stuff they've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it's it's beautiful and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see this stuff, you know. Um, Caesar says, Grummet does great commissions. Oh, um, yeah, he, he certainly does. I just wanted to say, let me put it back up here. So Jason, my good Southern friend, I just want to say, <laughs> I just want to say, don't look at me. Don't look at me. The way to get commissions or, or whatever with, with, with Tom is you got to go on Facebook. You go to the group. I think it's called The Art of Tom Grummet. I think, so, or, yeah, Tom, yeah, I, or is it yeah. Tom Grummet fan page? Or I, I don't know. I, 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 I forget. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you can find it. It's, yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not difficult to find. Um, you got to go to the official, you know, whatever art of, of Tom Grummet group. Um, and then uh, 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 Byron, his, his representative, it, it, it's his group. He started it. Um, you have to put a post. Like he doesn't answer every day because he's busy. He won't be there every day. But if you write a post, okay, write a post in that group. Join the group and write a post saying, "Hey, how do I get on the Tom's commission list?" Just do that. I guarantee you, some fan is gonna say, "Talk to Byron." Got that Byron Ham. <laughs> yeah. And then in a day or two, or maybe even that same day, sometimes. Byron will answer you and say, yeah, whatever. This is how you do it, whatever. And that's it. Simple. You, you, that's all you got to do, okay? Um, but that's also to... the place, even if, if they're not, if he's not open right now, that he, he posts on there when the commission's, like the list is, and their spot's available. And the pricing, all that stuff is, is there. So Yeah, exactly. So there you go. Um, guys, okay, SGC. Okay, what are we talking about? SGC, uh, Tom Grummet. Okay, Tom Grummet fan page. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, whatever. But I, again, the same way though, Caesar, that he doesn't reply quickly through his own group on Facebook. Uh, you have, you know, you'd be the, you know, it's the same sort of luck of the draw if you reach out to him on, on Cap. He'll eventually get to you, but is it? The same day or is it three days later or whatever yeah i don't know but i find personally he replies quicker when you when you ask about commissions through the facebook group that's when he gets in touch faster that's that's my yeah that's my experience so there you go southern comic geek that's that's my help to you um and matt says facebook is the best way to get byron there you go there you go okay so from there everyone let us get to the next piece. And this is a double page spread. Let's check this out. Dark Knight yeah. uh, Death Metal by Greg Capullo and Jonathan Glapian. Let's check this out. And by the way, I just want you to know before you say anything, Carl, um, yeah. I like a lot of things here. Um, but the thing that <laughs> pushed me the, 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 to include this piece was that there was an appearance in one panel by guess who <laughs> you want to take a guess 
Uh, uh, super, wait, no. No. Black Adam? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh. Come on. One panel by... I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, it's Cyborg Superman. It was, it, that's like... Cyborg Superman! The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, was looking, I was looking beyond the obvious, I think. No, that's, <laughs> it. like, that's what you were probably yeah. doing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So that, that's, that's the main reason why I own this page. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So this yeah. is... Uh, I, I, so death metal was absolutely crazy. Um, in a good but, way, or I mean, I, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I mean, it's uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I really did enjoy it. Um, it, it's one of those events where a lot of the the bonus, like uh, other mini series stuff, really uh, told a lot of the story. So you really need to read a lot of it instead of okay. just the regular the, the seven issue mini series. Um, but I really did enjoy it, and what I really liked about it was just that it was again the gloves were off for Greg to just design crazy, you know, costume uh, for for a bunch of the characters. And this one specifically, it's it's it has a lot of what what I love. I I really I enjoy villains, but I, but Cyborg Superman being there. Uh, when I first read the comic, I was like, oh, that pay that spread is amazing. Um, but yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. It, Really, yeah, really I just cool. love this one. Yeah. Oh, and I, I guess I should also say that in the third panel, there's another yeah. character that I also really love. His name is Atrocitus. Yeah, the um, red lantern. Yeah. Yeah, that that evil group of lanterns, man. Yeah. He just looks scary as hell. <laughs> He's a cool looking character, yeah. He's a cool, cool looking man. He's got these crazy, huge, sharp teeth. And yeah, yeah, he's just like terrifying looking, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I'm also one that that likes uh, Superboy Prime. Uh, I oh yeah. I I like what he represents, and like what you know. It it's uh, yeah. I just I really like that character. I don't I don't like so much some of the stuff that happened with him later, like in the with like the Yellow Lantern stuff. But uh, in Infinite Crisis, I was like, yeah, this is this is this is pretty cool. Um, so I really do like that he was in, in that story, and it was the Infinite Crisis version of uh, Superboy Prime. So cool. I, I like that he was on that page too. So just a combination of factors, but mainly, yeah, Cyborg Superman. So. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, I mean we're we're in the uh, Cyborg Superman club, I guess. So uh, yeah, it's it's no <laughs> not shy about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, oh, one. One uh, Daniel saying that Dark Knight's metal and death metal had some incredible pages. Yeah, nice, nice looking and stuff. Yeah. Capullo really is one that that um if you look at the order of which he does stuff, I feel like he really does continue to challenge himself. So the the stuff that he does is I mean it's it's uh super detailed and it's like death metal has some of his his best work in my opinion. Um but then I also like they did a a creator owned with Scott Snyder called We Have Demons, and some of the work in that is like that was after uh, he, he moved on from from DC, and the art in that is just it's fantastic. So um, he really does. I, I think he he says it on on online, but I think you can also see it in in the work that he doesn't phone anything in. No, 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 I agree. Um, Rick wants us all to know: Cyborg Superman is greater than Sunshine Superman. <laughs> Well, you're comparing like a song to a character in a comic book, so that's kind of that's a bit of a stretch comparison there, Rick. I don't, you know, I, and Sunshine Superman is a pretty, yeah, it's it's pretty good. I don't know, but 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 Cyborg Superman wins for the win. Yeah, <laughs> I can't really disagree. Won. And Ian says I did enjoy metal. It it was fun. I mean, I, I metal and and death metal were fun. I mean, they you know they're 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 not gonna win like you know best story of all time yeah but, like if you read it and you have fun then that's what it's cares? all about yeah. yeah exactly okay for a change of pace tell us about this one because um <clears throat> excuse me um oh good night jason have a good one thanks as always my friend i appreciate you have a great week <coughs> and um yeah nice Big change of pace here from what we just saw. Check this out. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I really like Frankenstein. I like the Universal Monsters uh, specifically. I really like Frankenstein uh, above the others. Uh, I would rank that original film probably in my top ten. I, mean, I don't, I, I don't like doing top ten type stuff, but like that would be there. I mean, I, I watch that movie a lot, even when it's not Halloween. I, I just will kind of put it on. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a feel good movie for me. I don't know. It's just comforting to watch it. Um, <laughs> It's, yeah, it's just one of those, you know. Um, but but this one, this was part of a, uh, um, a an October like sketch theme, but it was it was Doctober. So every day he did a, a doctor character, and then the first day was Doctor Frankenstein. So um, it, it's it looks like it's a you know right out of the at, right out of the movie as the the monsters laying there. And you're looking to see if he's about to come alive, but yeah, I, this this one just hit me right in there. Like, okay, yep, I got I gotta have that. So. Yeah, it's it's fabulous. As soon as when you when you posted it, I was like, oh wow, like it it it, it looks like a a still from the movie, you know, yeah, turned into really, a comic book yeah. form. Like, yeah, it's just you know, yeah, really really beautiful. I like the composition of it all. It's really really uh, nicely done, and I like the fact that it's something that's well. I was going to say instantly recognizable. Not, not if you're not, <laughs> not fan, one, yeah. obviously, right? But um, if, if, you, if you are, if you've seen the movie, um, yeah, you recognize it right away. And it's cool that it is a piece, that it's about the doctor. It's the doctor, and it's, yeah. still, it's still so cool because it is the doctor, not the monster, you know? I think that is what right. makes it cool. So, yeah. I was really also, like, it. just the, uh, the gray in the back, the kind of, like, yeah. it kind of sells the... The black and white movie I mean, it's it just the whole yeah. thing um yeah so yeah. and it's like a, it's a smaller like six by nine ish size piece um okay oh, oh okay cool yeah it's yeah it's that's, but it's it was great that's neat um all right from there we are going to go back into mainstream and check out this double page splash um because I love these this artistic team. I've said it on my show several times uh, on a, other previous show and tells. Uh, when I see collectors have art by this team, I always like to, to show it because one of my favorite yeah. modern teams. So check this one out. I have a feeling. Somebody, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, I I agree with you. This there. I love when 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 Eddie and Eber work together. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the Freedom Fighter series, um, but like the the art in it is just amazing. Like it's just yeah. super, super. Um, I, I liked. Uh, this is when um, Uncle Sam. So at the beginning, like all the Freedom Fighters have, have uh, uh, kind of been killed or out of commission because the Nazis kind of take over. They won World War Two and they 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 took over. Um, so the fighting spirit of America, Uncle Sam, goes away. And then then flash forward into the future. There's a new generation of freedom fighters. They um, kind of start, you know, inspiring people to to have hope that they're gonna kind of defeat the Nazis again. Um, and then finally Uncle Sam comes back and this is his triumphant return in Philadelphia and he just kicks the crap out of a bunch of nazi soldiers so um it's super powerful i love the, the like the just the boot tread on the one uh the soldier that's being flipped over yeah, um, yeah yeah just super super powerful and and their their work together uh it's just it's it's awesome i yeah i wish i'd see it see it more but you know yeah no it's 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 beautiful I mean, I ended up, um, you know, I'd been looking at it for a long time. And and then one day, a, a last year, I just decided, I think I'm going to buy myself two pages from this yeah. comic. It was a comic I, I hadn't even heard of. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, the name escapes me right now, but it was like some kind of a 12 or 13 issue series. It's with these zombie versions of the characters. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Task Force Z. Task Force Z. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I bought Red two, Hood. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, the Red, the Red Hood. I bought two consecutive pages just because I was just like I know nothing about it, but I was like I love the art so much. I just want to have some something from it, you know. Yeah, an example, an example from the artistic team is what I mean. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, it's so super. Yeah. I mean, to, to see it up close, like, I mean, you guys do know since you now have it, but it, it's so fun to look at. Sam, I am. And they asked him if he wanted green eggs and ham. <laughs> and Jason says he bought his Task Force Z page. Yeah, yep. That's, oh. that's right, yeah. That, that's a really cool page. And it, it has a, a Frankenstein nod to it. Because, like, in, in, oh, the, in the story... Yeah, they the the team is entering a um, a theater, and in the theater there's a, a poster in the corner that is a, a an homage to it. it looks like the Frankenstein poster. Okay. So yeah, but cool. Yeah, that's why when I, I kind of refined things, I was like, I really like this the Freedom Fighter stuff, and then I had this Task Force Z page that I really really liked, but then I was like, eh, I can you know I'll just kind of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always no, play the game, curate you know. I thought yeah. that's, that's what curating is all about, right? Like, yeah. if you're not looking to accumulate, you know, you get, oh, you, you upgrade something in your mind that's, oh, I like this one better, so I don't need the, the, the feel the need to have to own both. Let me just get rid of that one. And that provides you yeah. more cash flow for the next thing you want to get, right? So it's all about curating, like you say, you know? Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be. No offense to all of you no, who yeah. only buy and, and never sell. That's fine, you know? But it's for just a while, that's the way it works, it works yeah. for me, you know? Yeah. Like, that's. Because yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, this next piece, it, it, it it's my idea of fun. I really love it because it represents fun. There was a time, like when I was younger, reading comics, I would have hated to see this stuff on <laughs> on the stands. I'd have been like, oh, "What are you doing?" Um, but you know, I've got older. Uh, I, I'm I'm more sort of open to things that are just fun. You know. Nothing has to be, the, the superheroes don't always have to be serious or whatever. And I love that for this reason. Check this out. Yeah, the fun. That's why That's that's why yeah. I own this cover. Um, I love this one. I, I'm a really big fan of, of Tom Riley. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't buy a whole lot of modern stuff. I mean, I, I do, but, but not consistently, but I have multiple pieces from, from Tom because I love his, his storytelling, <laughs> but this one, it's just, Come on, it's Superboy walking crypto. Um, it just is fun. It just made me happy when I first saw the the solicitation for it, and I was like, "Oh man, that would be a great one to have." So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, exactly. I, I love the fact that it's he's walking the dog, the bus the boy and his dog. Yeah, yeah. And, and walking on air, right? Like it's like <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous, but like it's ridiculous, but it's that's what makes it fun, right? Yeah, and there's uh, I, I was laughing at some of the comments when I posted this on Cap. Was well, like, you know, you better be quick with those uh, crypto droppings. Yeah, <laughs> they can do yeah. some damage to the citizens below. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this uh, yeah, super fun piece. piece. Yeah, and uh, there you go. He has Walkman on. It's gonna good old nineties. Yeah. There, yeah there, yep. Yeah. 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 George What's up, George? Is, uh, Good to see you, man. A fellow Tom Riley fan, so yeah, yeah, very fun, very very fun. Okay, um, from there, I chose to go with independent. Um, I guess one of the more, I guess, mainstream independents, if if you will. Um. An artist whose work I every time I see it, I always really like what he does. So let's check this one out. And also because I wanted to ask you about the comic a little bit, but first tell us. Okay. About you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So Chris Stevens was not really anybody that I, I wasn't when I started collecting art, it was not like he was not on my radar. Uh, but being in the Facebook group, seeing people post uh, things like the color work was always like, oh, that's, that's really cool. Um, but you know, the commissions are, are kind of pricey. They were you know, out, of my, out of my range for like a commission piece. But then, uh, this popped up some, um, McFarland all through the month or all, all through the year, each month had one artist, uh, do a set of variant covers for his like four spawn titles. Um, and this month, uh, uh, Chris Stevens did four covers for, for, for the, the series. And right. uh, this one was, was my absolute favorite of the four, but plus I, I really enjoy this this comic. I do enjoy the the, the story. Um, yeah, I think like the, yeah, yeah. So for different reasons. Um, 
I love the main artist for for the series up until issue twenty four was uh, Brett Booth, and oh. be, being a fan of the nineties, uh, whenever I see Brett's work, uh, it just makes me happy. It kind of like reminds <laughs> you of that 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 nineties era. Um, but yeah, so I have, I have a so I have multiple uh, pages of Brett's from the series, and then when this one came available, I was like, I, I gotta I gotta go for that too, uh, just because I I do like the character. Um, the 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 story itself is uh, it's Todd McFarlane writing for thirteen year old boys. I mean, it's oh, like, it? it's like <laughs> yeah, he write he writes for that kind of like you know like oh that's cool you know. Uh, so the book is fun. It's not gonna win you know story of the year awards or anything like that, but it it is fun to read. So yeah, uh, for that fact alone, coupled with the the you know Brett Booth's art, it's awesome. But this one specifically. Um, I, I also own so each month the the, the book has two uh, usually has two variant covers like a cover A and a cover B. Uh, I also own the cover B for this issue, which was done by uh, Brett Booth and Adelso Corona. So I actually own both covers from that single issue, which I thought oh was actually so yeah, that's right. I I, I so, remember seeing that one. Uh, that's the one where he's cracking through the the, the wind. The, yeah, uh, busted yeah. glass is flying everywhere, right? Yeah, I really, really like that 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 image, yeah. and that was like that was my favorite of the covers that he has done to the to, for the series to date. Okay, so I got that one first, and then this one, um, I I lucked out on a Felix drop, and I and I got to that one first. So, cool. was um, so, so, all, so. I, all I wanted to ask you is, um, so is that literally the actual Spawn character, but set in the what in the old West? Is that what it's? That's it's not. It's it's a. Oh. It's a separate. So it was a, uh, a the spawn from the eighteen hundreds that has okay. been pulled into okay. the future. Um, oh, it takes place like in modern. So, so yeah, this series, this series does. This series takes place in the normal. So he's like a fish out of water. Oh. He is the least powerful spawn there is. So he's he's oh. a little more relatable because um, okay. he's always getting his butt kicked. Uh, but yeah, they are doing. Um, a, a series starting in January that is going to be set in the Old West, and uh, um, so that 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 would be that would be cool. So okay, interesting. Okay, well, this next piece, um, I believe, is the one. Uh, it's one by an artist we mentioned before, which is too. Ex it tends to be too expensive for you to collect, and yet you own one by him. So um, I believe this is the one. Let me see, and if it is, well, tell us about it. Yes, yeah. that's the one. Okay, <laughs> that guy's pricey. Uh, yeah. So this is so. Um, Jim Lee was. I mean, obviously, I, I, being a fan of the '90s, I I love Jim Lee's work. Uh, but the '90s stuff was untouchable. So during COVID, when you know collectibles were going crazy, I sold a bunch of stuff. Um, I noticed that you know some of the prices on Albert's site hadn't gone up. So, uh, and I, and the prices for some of Jim's, like when he does those head sketches or profile sketches on like comic backer boards. Uh, so for the price of a couple of those, I was able to get like a published piece yeah. and you get more, you get a full, you know, yeah. it was the Green Lantern image that really kind of sold it to me. I, I do like the character Green Lantern. I would um, imagine. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that's, that's the, that, you know, that's what sold it to me. And it just made sense. I was like, well, I could just, I could just get that if I want to have something to, uh, uh, having the collection and like Ian saying, it, it, it's a lead up to metal. So uh, you know, I, I enjoyed following Capullo and Snyder's work. So this was from a book that kind of tied into the stuff I also was reading. So it just yeah. it, it thematically for the collection fits as well. So um, yeah, yeah, I love Green Lantern. So I mean, I love all the you know the big uh, JLA. Yeah big time dc characters so for me yeah green lantern it's beautiful by jim lee so um, and you get you get the bat cave without having the right the, the, the batman tax on it <laughs> so yeah exactly yeah you don't have to pay the premium for the bat um but yeah. you get the bat cave and it's not just him standing there i love the fact that he's yep. using one of his constructs that's you know that's right kind of for green lantern as well right and he's like, he's in, he's in each panel. Um, yeah, I just, 
it, it, it to me that financially, plus it has uh, dinosaurs on there, which you don't see in the comic, but yeah. like, the, the dinosaurs covered up by the word bubbles. Um, right. <laughs> so yeah, it just had, when I was looking at Albert's site, I was like, this has a lot going for it. And when you compare it to what you would spend on getting a quick kind of sketch from Jim, uh, right. this was, you know, this is the way it's to so go. Plus, fun. yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. What Daniel was saying, I, I, I had another uh, page with Lex on it, a Jim Lee Lex page. But then I, yeah. I was like, man, I don't, I don't need that anymore because that was my Jim Lee example. So yeah, I sold yeah. it to Daniel and he has a Lex collection. So it just fits. Okay. Everybody wins. So that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Way to go, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. And like you said um, earlier, right? That's uh, if you like, artists of the caliber of Jim Lee, that type of stuff, right? It's, 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 it's a great way to get something in the, well, again, much more affordable than usual level, yeah. right? It's, it, you always, to, to me, I have to, you look at, it's not just, when you look at what's affordable, what's not affordable, look at what, what that money could get you from that yeah. artist right. elsewhere, you know, like what, compare it to what's available. Um, so, I, so my mindset was those those sketches on the comic backer boards. Uh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. I wouldn't. I would never. So, I wouldn't, but what? So I for a couple of those, I was like, oh, I'll just get this this page, and it's published. And yeah, um, yeah. So, and plus, I did. You know, I did a payment plan with Albert, and it just makes things much more manageable. And yeah, sell some toys, buy some art. Everybody there wins. You You're all set. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, from um, the DC universe, let us go to another universe. One which I got to tell you, because again, I'm always honest, Carl, um, and I don't mean anything by it. It's not being offensive. Um, None taken. This is, this is a franchise. It's funny, and I have to say this only because it's a franchise that I just never cared for. But when I read your write ups, I was like, oh, he, he really. Love this. I'm like, wow, two op such op op opposing views on the same thing. Yeah. Um, which I thought was interesting. So I just want to hear you talk about this. But also, I like the artwork, so that it's fine, you know? Um, so yeah, so check this out. Hold on before I show it. What are these last few comments that come in? Oh, uh, I compare my art prices to guns and precious metals. We know that, Scott. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this coming from Albert? He wants to know. And Karen, you're comparing the price of art to guns and precious metals? Well, uh, okay. You guys should chat together. Um, yeah. You didn't ask for a discount from Albert? I think, I think, I think. No, you did. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I know better. Yeah. yeah. Price is the price. Go. Next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So let's look at that next piece. Check this one out, everyone. Yeah, I had a feeling that's what you were yeah. <laughs> referring to. The Planet okay. of the Apes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love the Planet of the Apes. Um, yeah. And you know what? I am thankful that there are not a lot of people who, yeah. you know, there are people like yourself that are not as into the, the, the franchise. Because it's, the art is typically, you know, it's it's more affordable. So, yeah. I mean, th this, this must have sat on Simon's page for years. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I bought it from there, and and, and uh, they were running. He ran a, 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 I think it was a Black Friday type type discount. But I was like, you know what? I I, I like all red. Uh, I wanted an example of his. Uh, this was sitting there. I was like, this is kind of perfect. I mean, I, I uh, it's not. It's not. It, it doesn't have. It doesn't immediately read as an all red piece until you kind of look at the silhouettes of the of the characters on the bottom uh, of the of the cover. You're like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. You see more. It, you, then it kind of like comes together that it is a, yes. an all red piece. Um, but yeah, I for years like I always loved uh, the Planet of the Apes. I would they'd be on TV. I'd watch them. Uh, oh, I wrote a paper. <laughs> yeah. You found yourself another fan here, and Rick Welch is another. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just think they're very interesting. I mean, I think all the movies are are uh, they're unique. Um, they they. I enjoy watching how the budgets on each of the film went down, but and you can see it on the on the on the screen. But the stories are still there. The stories are really good. Um, so yeah, I I I love all the movies for for different reasons. 
yeah and number one marvel fan is another fan <laughs> he's apparently the number one uh planet of the apes <laughs> planet of the apes as well yeah <laughs> well okay so here's a nice segue for you and, and i i can't wait to, to hear what you you have to say about this carl um what your opinion is because so as much as i never cared for that franchise I have to say, I feel the exact 180 degree opposing view to the franchise. I don't know if you even consider it the same franchise or not. But when it became from that, and when it then became this. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, dude. I, I, yeah. I so, I can't tell you. How much I adore this trilogy, um, and how much I feel that the decision to actually redo it with actual the characters being apes instead of man, yeah. to yeah. me, oh my god, that was the most brilliant move ever. And yeah, I, I love this. Just an amazing, amazing trilogy to me. I agree. I I, I love those as well. I mean, I I, I love <laughs> everything about all of the movies that have that have come out. Um, but this one, so Marvel, since when Marvel acquired, I guess Disney acquired uh, the Fox properties, they um, they redid like Alien and Predator, and then uh, earlier they, this year they did a uh, Planet of the Apes uh, miniseries that that follows the the timeline of what's set up here in the in the, the like the Caesar era of of uh, the, the newer movies. Um, but so Dave Walker, he didn't. He only did a couple pieces traditionally. He did a lot of the book uh, uh, digitally, but this was actually oh. one of the pieces that, yeah. So he he did. There was this a double page spread, and then I think one other page from, or one other double page spread from that issue that that he did traditionally. Everything else was was digital. So, but this one, I just I just love that it that it, it kind of it highlights that climactic moment from that first uh, first of the new movies. So okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Daniel's a big fan of this as well. Uh, he says that the, the the rebooted movies were great. And uh, Dwayne says they have another film coming, and the trailers they out. do. Wow, do they? The, the the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So it's that's it's set like I don't know how I'm not sure how long after Caesar, but many many years after uh, the events of the that oh. trilogy. So, but it's oh. in that same. You know, timeline. Yeah, type thing. Any any idea if the plan is to do it like with most franchises? Oh, hoping for if it does well and it's a trilogy, basically. Is that you think? That I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I I gotta think that it's. I mean, it's it's now owned by Disney, so they're looking for viable franchises. So they want. I'm sure they want this one to turn into a, a, a trilogy of films. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Hoarder's Hide. Scott says, uh, "Is it pencil and ink, or did he print the blue lines out and ink it?" I, I think he printed the blue lines out and inked it. it it's 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 it, in looking at it, you can't really tell. Like it's not very obvious what what he did. Um, I mean, maybe to a better trained eye, it might. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, I would imagine since he does most of the stuff digital, I would imagine he he did the layouts for everything and then decided, okay, well, I can I can sell this easier, so I'm gonna. You know, do this one traditionally. So, which mm -hmm. I, I mean, makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was a great piece. A great, great, great piece. Um, it makes me. It, it, I saw it and I was like, oh, I wish I had more time to watch movies. I feel like watching that trilogy all over again. You know? So good. Yeah. Yeah, oh, they're great. I gotta see it again. Yeah. Um, okay. So from there, let us go back to uh, mainstream with this piece. Yeah, I love the fact so, that it, 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 you know from this era, 1972, and it ended up being non John Buscema, non Ramita, and instead the lovely Ramona Freyden. It's uh, the one issue. I think the one issue that she did a Fantastic Four. Um, yeah, yeah. It's the only time that that Ramona and Joe, like Joe inked Ramona. Um, nice. So yeah. So I this so. I this was not uh, my era of, of comics, but I, I love Ramona Freyden. I just I, yeah. I, her art just gives me it's like pure joy seeing her, her work. Um, yeah. I've always liked uh, the thing. I've always liked that character. Um, 
but yeah, so um, Scott uh, Cress from Catskill had this available, and he posted it online. It's like, oh, I, 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 I just, I just need that um, because another, uh, not intentionally, but what I've kind of have started doing is I've kind of collected uh, pieces of Ramona's from different phases of her career. Uh, I have like a Super Friends page. I have this one, and then some of the some of her current uh, cover work that she's done. But I just thought yeah. this would just fit in nicely, and it's just a it's a beautiful. It's uh, gorgeous. They're all yeah, like it, yeah, it's, it's just gorgeous. So... And 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 her 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 style. Well, I mean, kudos to to Joe because practically anybody looked wonderful when when Joe inked them, especially back in those days, yeah. you know. Um, but but what I love about it, other than the fact that the the art is so clean and beautiful, I love the fact that what we're looking at here, it's it's kind of funny because you got like Reed Richards and um, uh, Johnny, Johnny, like like a, like a couple of sad sack losers, right? Like, moping, yeah, yeah, moping and lamenting that their their girlfriends are gone or whatever, you know, like yeah. whoa, whoa, is me. <laughs> And then, and then, and then you got Ben Ben Grimm there, like all happy, telling you got, <laughs> got, got the, the girl on his arm, and he's like, "What? Hey, what's what are you so upset about? This is great. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, life is great, you know. Like, oh man, that's so funny. So I love it. Yeah, and it's like I said, the, the line art is so beautiful. So, and uh, again, I, <laughs> I, met, I met Ramona once about 20, 22 years ago. She was such a lovely lady, um, and I love her art. So. Yeah, uh, it's it's always fun to see it, you know. Yeah, she's she's one. Um, now this one wasn't directly from her, but she's one that I try I try to support as often as I can, just because I, I I love I love what she's doing, and she's and she still puts out amazing amazing work. I mean, it, yeah. her her commissions an hour. Or, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. So. And 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 she's what like ninety seven? Ninety seven. Yeah, wow. ninety seven in, in October. She turned ninety seven. Oh. Wow! Imagine ninety-seven. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because I remember when I met her. It was at <laughs> Motor, Motor City, Detroit, and I remember at the time, like, oh wow, I gotta go see Ramona because she's already like seventy-two or something, or you know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, you know. And then years later, yeah, oh, she's look, still a quarter century later, almost. Uh, oh shit, she's still around and drawing, and wow. I, her her pencil work now is is still something that just I look at it just it? gives me yeah pure joy yeah. seeing it yeah yeah so. I, I I love it. Matt says that Carl has the best Freden collection. I don't know about best, but I I'm happy with it. Thank you, thank you, Matt. <laughs> Carl is a Freden pusher. He makes everyone want a piece from her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Carl Daniel Wonder owns Wonder a Lex. By Freden is amazing. Yeah, that one. There's a I, there's a couple of pieces that that uh, a cover that I have, and then a, like a pinup that they did in um, uh, Wonder Woman, I think seven fifty from a couple of years ago. But yeah, okay. just so cool. Yeah, Matt, I've if only if only I knew what you were talking about. I did. Oh, whoa! What? That's it's like he knew. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I. I had to, you know what? I was like, I was going to show the vintage and when she was younger, but then I'm like, you know what? That's not enough. The fact that she, she drew this cover in her, in her mid nineties, I, I yeah. got to show, I got to show this as well. And I love the fact that it's Wonder Woman jumping out of a, a Wonder Woman original art page, that, that whole yeah. thing, that, you know, that's awesome, man. She, um, so Ramona does like a, she has, there's a couple different commission pieces that she does, but one of the themes is, is this kind of working at the draft table and things kind of uh, jumping out of the page. Like she's done commissions where it's, where it's her sitting there with the characters that she's best associated with, like Aquaman yeah. um, kind of jumping out of the, out of the page. But then when she did this cover, I was like, Oh, man, this is, this is, this is fantastic. And I love uh, Sandra Hope is somebody that I, I don't think <laughs> gets enough credit for being, an amazing inker. I mean, obviously she's, she's known, but like, it's just, yeah, I love the way that she inks uh, Ramona, like so kind of respectfully. It's just so clean. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Um, she still certainly does have a Shin Kazama. She, yeah. I mean, I, there's another, she just did a, uh, um, earlier this year when they redid, uh, like the Superman books, she did a Lois Lane cover that I, that I was able to pick up. Um, yeah. 
because it's just yeah it's just i i it, i love i love 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 her work yeah it's very as the perfect perfect timing rick very classic is what i was gonna say yeah. it, 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 it kind of it, it takes me back to you know since she worked on super friends um, her work kind of takes me back to that that era where I was kind of first introduced to her to to those characters in Super Friends. So it, it kind of reminds me of that style that that I first kind of saw in the, in the cartoons. Um, yes. So yeah, it, it's yeah. that combined with you know her, yes. her style that, that yeah I, yeah that I love. It, it definitely ties into that nostalgia for anybody who was a, a Super Friends watcher. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. No, it's absolutely spectacular. What a, what a great piece to, to pick up. And did you did you have to reach out to, to, to Scott for that? Or how did you get that one? That one, uh that one. That I uh, forget. There's there's one that Carl, I that I Carl, everybody should know. Carl is so wealthy and buys so much art. He doesn't remember where he gets what he buys. No, 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 no. no. It, it was. <laughs> I what I remember what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm debating is if it was one that he posted online or one that I knew was coming, so I contacted him. I'm not sure. Which which of those? I think that's one that I I saw was coming, so I reached out to him and said, I said, hey, is this if this is going to be available, that I would I would love to pick it up. So right, um, yeah, Lee, uh, I only have a I have less than a handful of pieces to show. So um, yeah, in a few minutes, wait a few minutes, and then just go back and rewind and and catch the stuff that you missed. And Matt, you came in with a late. Are you is your is your that's feed the, maybe? Uh, Behind the, because what? Are, there it is. What do you mean? Oh, uh, yeah. But he's talking about the the frame cover. He said because he mentioned yeah. it, and then I, yeah. I showed it. But like your 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 comments really late. Uh, Matt, maybe refresh your browser because I think your your um the feed the live feed for you you I think you might be behind, or un unless unless you were just busy doing other things. But yeah, it came in like after I took it off the screen, so it's, it's kind of weird. Um, but you might want to try refreshing your browser just to maybe catch up to us. I think you might be a little behind. But yeah, that was a fantastic piece. So um, I'm sorry. In the end, did you say what did you say about the, uh, getting it? Did you remember what, what you? Got I, it? No, I, I know. I know that I bought it from Scott. I just I, I think you it was one that I. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, what I was debating was it was if I if he posted it to to the Catskill site or if I had reached out previously. Reached out. Okay. So, yeah. yeah whatever. Yeah. That doesn't matter. But you got. But, it but yeah. But yeah. I got. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I did. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Um, so one of the last few pieces I wanted to show, I love this one. And we've uh, shown a piece by the artist before, but that's okay because I really loved it. I wanted to show another one. So check this one out, everybody. This will appeal, I think, to people into the modern era and to people who love older work. I love yeah. this, man. Oh man, it's so cool! Super so cool, great. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I, um, you know, in, in in loving you know the Universal Monsters and just kind of like that kind of vibe, uh, I, I love this cover. Uh, so this was, I think, Tom's first Marvel cover. I'm pretty sure this was his first cover that he did for Marvel. Um, he was the the artist on this book as well, uh, and there was a, a two page spread that I bought that features the fantastic four and namor uh from like it's it's, it's the the battle that's happening in the original fantastic four issue four and it's a young scott summers watching that happen and he, he kind of has this like realization like whoa uh, there's like a maybe a place for me in this you know this world with like you know heroes and, and whatnot so uh so i i'd reached out to um josh at modern mythology and I was asking about the the, the two page spread, but then he said, "Hey, I also have his cover." And I was like, "Oh, yes, please." Uh, so yeah, I, I I love just the the monster vibe going on with all the heroes. Uh, one of the things I absolutely love about this panel or the, this this uh, this cover is in Ant Man's helmet, and like the bottom right of the cover is a reflection of Iron Man's helmet. Which is like something oh. I didn't realize. I didn't realize when I first looked at it, but when I, when I got it up close, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's a yeah." So I just I, I like that he that he did that. So just a little little detail. Yeah, yeah. Marcus is excited because Cyclops is his favorite superhero. <laughs> he loves Cyclops. Yeah, very much so. And uh, Shin Kazama says he loves the composition. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous. That's why I was just like, "Wow!" And and all the silhouetting yeah. and. 
Tom oh, has a. a I, I love like Tom has a great ability to. He just kind of he can he can he can draw a uh, a story or comic that just sets it in like a period piece, and it just feels like an old kind of sci-fi vibe uh, on this cover. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. I like the very Ditko esque look of the characters. You know, um, yeah. Again, like yeah. I said, it's, it's just it's got it's like, that, it's got that early '60s Marvel feel to it, but also very contemporary at the same time. You know, yeah. So he, he's like one of the the uh, when it comes to modern art and artists, like he's one that I've really kind of latched onto and have followed his career and everything he does. I I, I really love. So he's doing a um, uh, Duke. Uh, G.I. Joe comic coming up soon. Oh, really? So, oh, okay. Yeah, and that whole, like, relaunched Transformers G.I. Joe right. shared universe. He's doing the, the Duke uh, book. Okay. So. Well, JC, that he loves not only the cover, but how eclectic your collection is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It started out as, like, Superman-focused, and then I, <laughs> you know, kind of branched out. So Yeah, and, and I, I, I wanted to show that. You know, that's why... You know, initially, when we spoke last year after that Superman show I did, and I said, oh, you know, maybe I'll have you next year for another Superman show, whatever. But then more and more I thought about it, and I was like, you know, over the last year, I was like, I want to get Carl on. I kind of don't, I want to throw a curveball. I, I kind of don't really want, just because he's known as, you know, a Superman guy, I don't really just want to do a Superman show. I thought, I want to have yeah, you I'd on. Right and 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 show that you're not just Superman guy, death the Superman guy. You know what I mean? Like right, yeah, you know, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because because it's not just about that, right? So that's what I kind of and so I'm happy. I'm happy I decided to kind of go that way because believe me, Thank you, yeah, yeah. Even even when I asked you to do it and you said yeah, I still had that thought in my head of oh, do I have to pick twenty Superman pieces? Like should I? You know, I was well, thinking, you know, and I'm like. I don't want to, you know. I just don't. That's want why, to. Like, yeah. When you reached out, I was like, yeah, pick, pick whatever, whatever you see that would be fun to kind of talk about. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. I'm happy. I'm, I'm really, really happy. Now, that being said, um, I did <laughs> the next I, piece I, is Superman. <laughs> there, yeah, there was, there's, <laughs> there's probably I think forty percent of the piece. I think eight out of twenty were Superman, you know, related, whatever. But still, I, I figure, you know, that's still a lot. It's a good representation. Without being nothing but Superman, you know, and yeah, yeah that's it. Oh. I mean, the, some of the, like the, that stuff that I love in that era is so expensive that uh, that can't be all that I I collect because it, it, I would you know <laughs> I wouldn't wouldn't be able to acquire much art. You know? Yeah, yeah. So exactly, exactly. Well said. Um. Okay. So um, a couple of pieces, everybody, uh, to go. And this second to last one is a lot of fun. This 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 is why I picked it because it, for me it comes into the. Uh, Falls into the under the category of uh, fun, um, so I, I had to do it. Uh, check this one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, and by the way, by, yeah. by the way, Carl, I know that in your gallery you refer to them as Kid Superman, Kid Doomsday, Kid this, Kid that. Yeah. But I, yeah. I don't know. To me, I just felt they're younger than than than, than kids. I was like, okay, I got to call them Baby Superman. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So these, I saw Greg post uh, some stuff on online that he was doing like a, a sale on these baby versions of, of superheroes. And uh, 2019 was the year that um, I became a father. That's when I first had, when we, we had our daughter. Okay. Um, but I was like, oh, I, I would love to get some stuff that I could hang in my kids' rooms, you know, like, you know, potentially. Yeah, but this yeah. is before she was born. We, we didn't know we were having a boy, girl, whatever. Um, but so I, I, uh, I asked him to do some baby versions of Superman. And Superman is, is in his recovery suit, waking up from a very, very long nap, as yeah. a kid, a baby would do. He's got his, his, his cape blankie there. And then Doomsday, of course, is the, the, the kid knocking over all the Legos. So um, I just, love these were just fun. I, I, I have a couple um, hanging in my daughter's room. I have a couple hanging in my son's room as well. So Yeah. Yeah, these are just so fun. I mean, I love them both, but, but I especially love the, the, the fact that, you know, the, the, the Doomsday is not just Doomsday with, of course, the porn containment suit, but 
kicking yeah. over the Legos. That's the added extra yeah. piece that, that puts it over the top, you know? That's like, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's awesome. So, oh I'm God. just like, yeah, I, I love both of those for the, because they, they work as ba- it's what the baby version would, would be doing. So, yes, 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 exactly. Exactly. Look, even Scott, Scott, you think these are cool. Exactly. There you go. They are cool, man. And they were, you know, very inexpensive. They, they, they're just fun. So, oh, and that's well said. That's well said, Jason. Doomsday is yeah. me. Yeah. The Legos, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, worst. One of the most painful things, feelings you can ever imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does Doomsday's feet adapt to stepping on Legos? Yeah, it doesn't hurt the second time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, okay, so that was the second to last piece, everybody. And for the last, the 20th and final P, well, the 20th slide, but of course we had a couple of slides with the two pieces. Um, the final one, yes, uh, in honor of <laughs> the Superman. What could Batman, it be? Um, uh, I did have to end it with Superman as well, and I thought I'd end it with uh, you know, one of my favorite artists. So, uh, there you go. Let's talk about this one a bit. Yeah, this was like the the thing that I thought would never happen happened. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't I, when I, I it, was, it wasn't even on my radar, really. I mean, it, it, I, it was on my radar, but I didn't think that I would ever own a page from from the Death of Superman story, right? Um, and let alone one that is very memorable to me, like uh, that I, I specifically remember, you know, reading. Uh, this issue is, you know, aside from you know the, the actual death issue, this is my favorite issue of the story uh, for a couple reasons. Like, I I love tom's uh work i mean it's it's amazing i love the uh the half containment suit look for doomsday i think yeah. that's like the best look for doomsday um and and it also the the uh this was the issue where the visual countdown started so this was the the issue where the uh the, the panel uh storytelling uh, i don't know what you want to call it uh tactic was used so they so Four issues, four issues before the death. Each each page had four panels on on the page, and then the next issue, there were three. The whole issue was um, full of three panel pages, and then the next was you know two pages, two two panels, and then finally in the death of Superman in seventy five, it was all uh, a book of splash pages. So this kind of started that um, visual device of having the four panels that kind of ramp up the the action and the the pace of the story. Um, so I like that that it was it was one of the issues that had that that um, uh, element involved, and also another thing is that two of the panels were used as uh, some of the trading card, like the trading card series. Oh that yeah, had. that's right. Yeah, yeah so remind us which ones now. The uh, it's the top panel with Superman, um, okay. him rescuing the the pilots from the the ship or the the, the plane, and then the uh, Maxima punching. Uh, Doomsday uh, panel oh, yeah. was a, was one of the trading cards as well. Ah, of so, course, of course. But yeah, it just has this one. It just had, had so much going for it, and I was lucky enough to you know get a hold yeah. of it. So yeah, a little uh, side story connected to that. Um, this page mm, could have been mine. Yeah, I, I was gonna. I was curious. I was gonna. I figured we'd talk about it here because I, I thought that maybe it could have been. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, well. Uh, so I, I, I ended up. I was talking with Byron. He reached out to me. He said, he said, you know, I, I, you know, there's a local collector. He's, you know, he's got some stuff. Are you interested? I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. Show me, show me what it is. And he, he, he first told me, yeah, I got some, um, I got some a Superman. Uh, a couple of Superman pages. And I got uh, a couple of uh, new Titans uh, 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 pieces. Mm. And um, so I ended up, I did end up getting a, a, a new Titans piece. And I ended up getting a Superman page um, from, I think, 495. It's the issue with the, um, uh, the Forever People. Yeah. Has uh, dark, is that the, the page that has Dark Side on it? 
Yeah. Yeah. Oxide, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and I, I ultimately decided, I was like, you know what? Yes, I don't have any Death of Superman, you know, stuff. I've always wanted to have at least one, but I just made the decision that for me, I really would want it to be a page with Superman and Cyborg Superman. Um, if yeah. I'm just gonna have one, and so for the kind of money that I have to spend, I I know I was just like, you know what, um, I'm good. Let I don't some other care. some other yeah. slum shell out the let, money. Let some other <laughs> slum in Pennsylvania pick it. Up, you know? <laughs> well, I I appreciate your train of thought. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's what it was. Um, so I think, yeah, so, so Matt had reached out to me because I think Byron had reached out to Matt and then uh, Matt knew that this was like something that was definitely on, on my radar, what I would want, um, not knowing if it was something that, that I could swing. Um, right. It was, the, it's like the, the, one of the only times where I, I broke my rule of keeping the collection, having it fund itself. So yeah. Uh, Everything else, I you know, I had toys for a long time. So most of my stuff, I, I have sold toys to then buy the art. That was like the one instance where I had to, <laughs> you know, had to yeah, pay up to get it. But but it was it it's yeah. and it was it was before the the huge, uh, um, John Bogdanov auction. So right. I mean. You know, it was still expensive. I mean, I, it was still expensive, but um, I, I, yeah, I'm very happy with with how that worked out. And it really getting that page helped me kind of just okay. I can I can dial it back now. I don't need to right. keep searching for you know a published page. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, totally, yeah, totally understand that. I mean, and just have say, something like, representative. Yeah, because even even had I decided to go for it. I would have felt the same way because I wasn't like, yes, I, 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 when, when Superman pages come up for me, they don't, I don't really care. Like they don't, I like Tom's, I like Tom's Superman. They don't need to be from the whole death, whatever. It could be from before or after that. And that this way I save money, a lot of money, right? I just like Superman drawn by Tom. So I, you know, I'm, I'm good with yeah. that. So that's why I still buy them. Even when it's from the electric blue era or whatever, you know, I, I, I just like it, you know? Um, that way, it's just a few hundred bucks rather than several thousand dollars <laughs> per, per page yeah. or whatever, you know. Um, and that way, I can buy them, you know, more than just one, and, and only have to force myself to be happy with only one, you know. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm with you. If, if if I pick this one, if I decided to go for it, I that would have been it for me. I'm like I'm not like I, I would be like, oh, I got to get me some more Death of Superman. Yeah, yeah. you know, like and like. Not at those prices. Like, forget it. Like, give me the, one, and I'm good. You know. Yeah, I, I have. I think I have a published page from. So it started out as the goal of having commissions by all the, all the artists mm -hmm. involved. And then I, I was able to, to to do that, and then along the way, it also morphed into like, oh, would it be cool to have a published page from from each of the guys like from that that yeah. era, each of, each of the creative teams, and mm -hmm. I I was able to then do that as well. So I'm. I'm happy. You're, I don't. You're good. I don't need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, you're you're good, man. You're good. <laughs> no, Representative. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it worked out. Uh, it was awesome, man. Hey, uh, that's the yeah. that's also the page I talk about. You know, when people talk about oh, a dedication on a page is oh, oh, a yeah, deal yeah. breaker. Like, right. no, it's yeah. not. I mean, uh, you know, for and I love yeah. the story because it was. It, it sounded like it was somebody who had had the page, bought it from Tom, or given to, yep. given from. I don't. I don't know that part. Yeah, Kurt, but yeah, Kurt, Kurt and Jackie, they were they were locals yeah. in uh, Saskatchewan, I believe, uh, where so, Tom's so, from. Yeah, so they they had yeah. that for you know, thirty years or whatever, yeah. or however however long. So yeah. to have that that added to me, that adds to the story of this page. It yeah. it, it adds to it way more than it it takes away yeah. from it. Yes, exactly. I I agree. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I would have preferred that um, it not be those gold sharpies, but back in the early nineties, <laughs> the gold yeah. sharpie for a while became the de facto cool thing to use by artists. You know, yeah. like um, Doug Hazelwood Perfect. uses it all the time. I'm just like, oh god! And he he signs. You've seen Doug's signature; it's monstrously large. Plus, he adds the S symbol. The S, just, yeah. Too much, man. Too much. 
Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like you say, it's part of the provenance and, of the piece. <laughs> and now it doesn't it doesn't stand out so much. It's somewhat faded, you know. Yeah. It, you know. So so yeah. win win. It's good. You know that it, it came from Kurt and Jackie, you know, Who, right? New Tom, you know, whatever. Tom, right from the same same hometown, whatever. They held um, it for 30 whatever years and you know, and finally yeah. let it go and then and now it goes to you, you know. So I was yeah, I was happy, yeah. So I, I like that aspect about that page. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. Cool, man. Well, look, uh, we've come to the end of the show and tell everybody. Wow. Already? Already, <laughs> yeah. Only uh, two hours and fifty one minutes and counting so far. But uh, it, I, honestly, it, it didn't feel like that at all. So I appreciate that because I ask everybody who's been on. And pretty much everybody says the same exact thing, like that. They say, "Oh, yeah. when yeah. you're here, it feels like it flies by," you know. Um, and I, you know, I'll, I'll share. I was, I was like, "Oh man, I don't know if I can like talk for that long." I don't, you know. But yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> well, well, see what what you don't realize, even though you watch it every now and then, is that the 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 reason the guests can 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 actually, you know, they don't have to really worry so much about talking for that long. It's because once you do it, you realize. Oh, it's because I did all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey. how it goes for three hours, right? Keeps yeah. it keeps it moving. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. So there you go, you know. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was so much fun, man. I, again, I can't thank you enough for, for for doing this. I'm so glad we we finally, you know, had you on, even though it wasn't for a, a Superman themed show, although there's still a, a chance that could happen, whatever, although it's not looking good for the end before the end of this year. So it wouldn't yeah. be anniversary related or whatever. But again, who knows, right? It, maybe in the I've, future, some other kind of uh, thing or whatever. I've got know. other art and more to say. So whatever. actually, I think I have something coming in the mail tomorrow. Uh, oh, really? Commission. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, Dwayne, great show tonight. Super collection, Carl. Thank you for sh uh, thank sharing. You, thank you. Thank you, course, Dwayne. Yeah, thank you. Ah, uh, Neon Dragon. Well, let's you know, keep going. <laughs> I don't know where Stanley is, but uh, I appreciate you uh, in his memory, uh, Stanley. Uh, I don't know. Where are you, Stanley? Um, I hope he's okay. I, don't, I hope he's alive and okay, because that's so weird for him to have disappeared permanently like that. Um, but thank you, and good to see you again, Neon Dragon. Really appreciate uh, you dropping by. Uh, can't let it fade like Starlin markers. No, I guess not. Um, fun show tonight. Well, you're always here, number one Marvel fan. So I would think that you probably deep down think they're usually fun. So I'm going to go with that. And uh, Lee, bravo. I knew I had to see this one. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, Lee and I have I have similar tastes. So I I, I, I definitely I watched his uh, your interview with him as well. I watched that that whole thing. Yeah, that was so. a fun show too. Yeah, yeah. I, I love doing my show with Lee. Yeah, that was that was really awesome. Um. So, Karen, that's a long message. So, thanks for a great show tonight. Uh, both of us, you're welcome. Uh, you've got some amazing art in your collection. Carl, good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Um, and I don't know if you were there watching or not, Karen, if you're still listening. Um, but in case you were busy doing other stuff, uh, make sure you at least go back and check out the um, second to last piece. Because I thought, I thought you would have appreciated that, given that you have young kids. Um, so that's it. Oh, and Shin Kazama, buddy. Um, I don't know if you saw it, uh, probably not, but when you first subscribed to my channel, uh, on the very next episode I did after you subscribed, um, I shouted you out, uh, as I do for everybody whose name I, cause I saw your name. Um, not everybody's name shows up when they subscribe. Um, so I just wanted to thank you because I believe that you first came from Karen's pages. I seem to recall seeing you um, commenting uh, on on one of under one of Karen's videos. Um, so um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, and uh, it's great to uh, to see you here and participate. That's that's really what makes my channel is all about the the interaction. So I don't get a lot of total views on my videos because well, first of all, I don't even have five hundred subscribers yet. But um, all my all my all my content, as if you probably noticed by now is long form content other than for short form videos I've recently done, which I'm starting to do just for unboxings. Um, it's all long form, right? So most people, whatever, even on even on Rewind where you could skip 
most of it, people are lazy, right? So they don't have time or they're lazy. They can't be bothered. So my channel is all about coming in if you can when it's live. That's where the fun is. That's when we all interact together. That's what makes my channel what it is. It's the live portion. If you don't tune in for the live portion, it's not as fun. Um, but I appreciate anybody who does tune in on Rewind anyways, you know. Um, that's, as far I mean, that's, as typically, that's usually, yeah, that's usually when I, I watch. Because I, 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 it just, with kids and you know, a lot of times I just don't watch, I don't have three hours to sit down and watch it. Yeah. Um, and even when I'm here, I don't chat as much, which I, I know I should. But it's just because sometimes, personally, I, I like hearing the stories of, of who's talking. And it's like, right. I... I don't necessarily want to make it about me, but I, no. I, mean, I, I do, I appreciate the, the back and forth. I just, yeah. I tend to, if I'm here, I usually just watch along. Yeah, no, I get yeah. it. I totally get it. Um, you can do a super villain show. Talk about <laughs> really focusing on an episode, you know? I mean, if, uh, if only we could find somebody who might like Lex Luthor. Uh, yeah, yeah. That exactly. might be tricky. Yeah. An all Lex Luthor show, art yeah, show. Art show, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Drunk Superman, thank you for dropping by, my friend. I appreciate it. We appreciated your drunken comments tonight. Uh, <laughs> Stumbling in when you can. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Neon. I appreciate it, buddy. Good to see you. Um, thank you, as always, Rick. You're always so kind and generous. Thank you, man. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Um, Dan, thank you very much again. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next week along with the other four guys. I think it's going to be super fun. I can't wait for next week. And, uh, yeah, Daniel, thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, and I hope thank maybe you, yeah. to see you in the future, even when uh, your buddy Carl isn't here as a guest, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for dropping by and, for again, for participating. Because it's not it's one thing if you're watching, but if you're participating as well, again, that's what it's my nice. channel – that's what makes my channel. It's the participation, the interaction with everybody. So I really love that, and I appreciate it. It's what, what helps it not feel like three hours. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. It may be three hours on average, but if you're here live, it tends to not feel that way, especially if you participate, you know. So uh, John C., fellow Canuck, thank you very much. Love the DC. Awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Love it. Uh, Matt, a lot of fun. Another Superman show would be fun. <laughs> I know you <laughs> I know you want to, Matt. Um, and like I was telling, just so you know, like I was telling Carl, um, I, I wanted to do one, you know, because of the anniversary or whatever this year again. That was the intent last year to do one again this year. Um, the reason it didn't happen yet is simply because the more I thought about it, the more I felt like it might become redundant. I was like, Ugh, are people really going to want to sit through another Superman focus show? And no offense personally, but then I was like, geez. I did tell you guys, I'd try to bring you guys back for another show. But then I'm like, are people going to want to see the exact same guest doing the same material? You know, so so that's the thing. Um, that's the reason. So I, I'm kind of trying to figure out what can we do? I'd love to do another Superman show. I uh, would love you to be a part of it. But it needs to be something a little bit, I don't know, different, something unique in some way. I don't know. It's got to be something where I feel like. People will still want to watch it, you know. Um, got pretty good views on that last last year's episode, um, but again, it may feel redundant. Just like my uh, Back to the Past videos, you know, people feel it gets redundant because we did so many of them back to back to back to back, uh, and so the views are you know, really low on those episodes. But which I get it, right? So, um, but I'm open to it. So it'd be fun. Yeah. Come up, come up with some ideas that can make it different from the last one that we did. And I'm, I'm open to ideas. And then, yeah, we can talk about it, man. Um, I saw what he says. I didn't know Carl had. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Better. Uh, thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we went three and a half hours. Yeah, we did. Yours and ours was a little bit longer than usual. Neon Dragon. All right, Ruben. We hours. need to go three, three hours and 31 minutes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Karen, you were bagging and boarding comics while listening. Cool baby pieces of that. Yes, it was the baby pieces, especially the one with the kicking the Legos. I figured you'd appreciate that. So thank you. Um, great show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your participation as always, Ian. Thank I appreciate you. it. Uh, 20 Lex Luthor page was getting sick. with the <laughs> I mean, like, I, 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 I'll consider almost anything. But because it's not just you and me privately, Daniel, and I have to take the audience into consideration, 
yeah, I don't think I'd want to do 20 Lex Luthor pages. Uh, let's put it that way. But uh, I would love to have you on. At the, yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything else? But, you, you know, let's talk. <laughs> um, thank you, JC. I appreciate it as always, man. Thank you so much. Um, thank always you. love to see you here. Thank you. Uh, participation trophies all. Uh, lots of fun. Yeah, it's going to be good. Good discussion next week. No art, but it's going to be a good discussion. Next time, more bunny mask. That'll yeah, that'll be a second uh, a second appearance by you, Scott, an all bunny mask show. Shit, that 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 will probably scare away the viewers more than an all Lex Luthor uh, uh, show would. I, I I would I would gather the the bet. A uh, Teen Titan show, Caesar. Let's talk. Uh, oh, by the way, everybody, I don't have a, a thumbnail to show you, but in December, probably it could be the last show. Yeah, it may be the last show of the year for me because Sunday the 24th, Christmas Eve, if 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 if, if Vivian and, and Arwen and I are not really doing much late at night, I may still go live on Christmas Eve just to say I went live on Christmas Eve <laughs> uh, to see if anybody doesn't, you know, celebrate Christmas and and or or you know whatever. I may, but I may not. Um, week after that, New Year's Eve, I'll be in Mexico for two weeks, so I'll be missing two shows there. So all that to say that my last show of this year could be. Um, the December, let me see my schedule here, December, yeah, 17th, and no matter what, December 17th is going to be what we talked about for those of you who were here last week, it's going to be an unboxing show with Cesar Alvarez. So <laughs> Cesar is putting together all those packages that he hasn't opened over the last however many years he's been accumulating. And we're gonna, he's going to come on and he's going to open the packages to share the fun and joy with all of us. So wow, I, That's amazing. He has the, he can, uh, can hold those off and not rip into I them. Know. Like, I, I know. That's... And I don't know how many we'll get to during the show, the live show, but he has 17 unopened packages. I, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's going to make it for a good show, but that's, that's going to be a fun show. So um, like, that'll be the that'll second be, it's uh, in my house. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be like four or five weeks from now, um, everybody. So remember that. Um, and um, yeah, next week will be that the round table with like five collectors plus myself. So that'll be fun. All art and comics talk is fun. Excellent. I'm glad you like it. Uh, Cap show? You mean Captain America? X-Men? Spidey? What's up with you? You want to <laughs> see shows for every superhero now? Uh, do a Valiant show. I know you are. That, that's Jason's way of saying, have me on your show again and let me show my value. <laughs> uh, I would do it. I just don't know that the audience is there for it, man. But I'm I'm willing to consider it. I, I just don't think the audience is going to be there. I mean, we might have like five people watch. I don't know. Um, and again, I don't care so much if the Rewind people don't end up watching, Jason. Because um, again, it's all about the interaction and fun. But I'm just scared that even live, the usual, a lot of the usual uh, people that, that show up live every week, I don't know if they'd want to see an all-valiant show, but we can think about it. We can all consider it. No joke. I can probably convince Muti to come on for a show at the bullshit. I'll think about it. I just don't know if anybody would care. And again, no offense to you or to him, and I read Bunny Mask after I saw your art when we did our show together. I was willing to take a look at it, and I thought it was cool and fun. But a show like with an audience, I don't know if the audience is going to show up for it. So, again, something I'll have to think about. Um, I'll talk to you. I have an idea. Oh, my gosh. Another idea? Okay. Yeah, email me, man. You know where to reach me. Uh, what's Carl's favorite? Okay, we're not going to continue this. No, no, no. He's doing that because he, he he wants to extend the as a yeah. joke. It's a whole running inside joke to keep going longer and longer. Uh, as long as some of the Lex pages had Super Superman too, yeah, I guess. But still, it would be like a Superman show, so similar, you know. Uh, sorry, Lee, Superman's on most. <laughs> that's how I got them cheaper. There you go. There you go, Lee. <laughs> so that's not gonna happen. Uh, Lee, tune to us. We do twenty four Valiant Marathon. That's for sure. But I have someone Superman. I have Hoarders High guest host. Have Hoarders High guest host. And and what? And I just do what? I go away. I don't know. 
Um, all hail Caesar. It's going to be fun. Yeah, next month. Um, yeah, let's get a, get a guest to use a channel. Um, you know what I was thinking? I, I, I've, all, I've always kind of wanted to have somebody else do the host, right? Like this, like here. Let me see if I can. I know this works. Let me see if, how this how do you do this again? I think I gotta put Carl here. And then let me do. Oh no, that's not the one. Hold on. No, that's not the one. That's not the one. How did I do it last time? Oh. Oh. Hold on. No. Okay, no. You gotta stay. I have to stay on the right. The host <laughs> has to stay on the right. And then right. Can everybody can so you hear gonna, me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, see, uh, I, I kind of thought of one day doing a show like if somebody had an idea that maybe they wanted to kind of host, then I can do it like this. If it's just him, if it's just that person, I can I can just kind of be here to run the tech behind the scenes, you know, and maybe offer a bit of commentary, but let somebody else run well, it. It's, you know, it's funny you should mention this. I put together 20 slides of Tom Grumman art of yours, and uh, we're just <laughs> gonna talk about that now. <laughs> What a coincidence that you were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, Caesar should wrap them with Christmas paper. That would be hilarious. That would be, but I, I wouldn't want to make him do that. Patrick, nice. Fortisite, I've got to do a flip soon. And that's a strong will there. Yes, exactly. Exactly. 17. And he, and he recently had up this almost as 20, close to 25, I believe it. But he opened a few. So, so that uh i'm in mexico i'm not in mexico now but I, I will be i'm leaving on the 31st and i'll be back on the 10th so i'll be missing the 31st show new year's eve and then on the 7th i'll be missing that um but i may do that I, I, I may do a pre-recorded two pre-recorded episodes of that idea i told you guys about with the comic books just to show comic book covers with a theme a certain theme that i didn't mention what the theme was um so I may just pre-record that just to, in case, you know, you guys want to watch something on those nights or whatever. So we'll see. Um, what you could do is if, if he gets back up to 24 packages, you could do, uh, you know, 24 <laughs> individual. It could be an advent calendar, like yeah. <laughs> opening one, <laughs> do 24 <laughs> short form videos. <laughs> do one a day. <laughs> Marcus, do not send me another gift. I appreciate it. If you're being serious, I appreciate it. You know that. But be, be, you better not be sending me any more gifts. No, no, don't send me gifts, everybody. You, you being here, no joke, is the gift to me. You being here, every single episode I've ever done, that's the, the best gift you could ever give me. Thank you. Carl, is that the Toybus Sentinel or the Haslab one? It's the Haslab one. The what giant. Was it? See, was it like, where, where am I going with it? Oh, I just can't see it on this part. But yeah, it's, it's back there. It's a giant Sentinel. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to ask you anyways. Carl, have you ever watched Age of Adeline? I've not. Okay, he hasn't. All right, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Good night, Daniel. Um, stick with me um, just for a minute, will you, um, sure. Carl? Yep, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, so I'll send you something, but if you get caught with it, our team may not be happy. Um, okay, so again, thank you everybody for the uh, wonderful time um, and, and sharing this time with us. Thank you again, Carl. Really, really appreciate thank you. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate you reaching out. This has been really fun. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so everybody, um, please uh, remember, I'm going to leave you with the thumbnail for next week. Um, here we go. Please come back next week. It should be a lot of fun. We've only done five previous round tables before this will be the sixth um but they've all been really really fun and like i said um the overall views um the higher on round tables that shows that everybody seems to like them i guess it's something about you know having more interaction with more people on screen um so yeah check this out this is uh next uh next week's show these are all the guys that will be on it um yeah and it promises to be a lot a lot of fun so yeah thank you and good night to you again a neon dragon thanks again for for uh, popping in for the first time in a few months and um good night to you lee appreciate it good night to uh, you marcus and to um the rest of you really really uh, really appreciate you all um have a great week don't forget to tune in on friday to uh the pre black friday sale on the exp and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys all back here next Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern.
5 o'clock Pacific. Peace and go blue.